here yet. Um, he didn't tell me he wasn't going to be here, so. Okay, well, we'll start anyway. Okay. okay. All right, well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the May 28th meeting of the Montclair Historic Preservation Commission. This is a regular meeting of the Montclair Historic Preservation Commission. Notice has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by posting a copy of the notice on the first floor of the municipal building and by sending a copy to the Montclair Times, the Star Ledger, and the Herald News. And in today's world, we, we are conducting the as a remote meeting. It's being conducted by Cisco WebNext Meeting. It's open to the public and it is being televised on TV 34, the Montclair Channel and the uh, Montclair Government YouTube. Public can participate in the meeting via computer, iPad, phone, Android device, or by telephone. And if anyone is, uh, wants to uh, get onto the meeting, I would uh, advise you to uh, go into uh, the Montclair Township website, and that will give you all the directions uh, uh, to access the meeting. Um, to participate by telephone, you could do that as well, please call 1-408-418-9388 and either enter and enter the access code 716-953-308. While you're on the telephone, you can view the meeting presentation on TV 34 or your cable television or through the Montclair government um, YouTube channel. So, uh, uh, further ado, uh, Mr. Pedo, could you please call the roll? Um, sure. Ms. Bennett? Present. Uh, Vice Chair Hyman? Present. Mr. Rooney? Here. Uh, Ms. Kane Levy? Here. Mr. Greenbaum? Here. Mr. Reimnitz? Oh, sorry, John. Here. Uh, Mr. Reimnitz? There you Here. are. Mr. Connolly? Here. And Mr. Karasik is not here yet at this time. Okay, okay thank you, Graham. Uh, has everyone, have all the board members been able to read the April 23rd minutes that Graham has, has sent uh, the link to? It was on the uh, Township website. Does anyone have any, thank you, Graham. Does anyone have any uh, amendments or changes to the, uh, to the minutes? I have not. No? I have no, okay. no changes. No changes. No changes. Okay. Great. Then can we have a motion to approve the minutes as written? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is public comments. Do we have anybody on the phone, Graham, that wishes to uh, address us? Uh, I see no public participants at this time in the meeting. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. We have no old business. Moving to item number six on the agenda, new business. And the first item on the agenda is HPC application 2020-10467- No, I'm sorry. That's, I'm reading from the old minutes. <laughs> sorry. Let me get the, the new... Okay, sorry. New business is um, um, HPC application. Excuse me, Graham, are you getting feedback from, from me again? A little bit, yes. And the, the agenda is, it's shown on the screen here if you wanted, Kathleen, as well. Okay. Let me just move it so you can read it from here. <laughs> we can read it. So I have to I have to read it. Okay. HPC application 2020-07-111-113 Watching Avenue, Boca Life Cafe, Boho Salon. This is an appeal of approval with conditions. Uh, the Minor Applications Committee reviewed this on February 28th. It's regarding the installation of a new awning and wall-mounted signage for business in the Watchun Plaza Historic District. And do we have the applicants present that are yes. appealing this? Yes, yeah. hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Well, can you can you identify yourself and the and your connection to this application, please? My name is Sally Monterosa, and I am one of the owners of the businesses. 
My name is Alby Monterosa, Jerry Albert Monterosa, one of the owners of the business is my wife, Sally. Okay. Okay, and then we also have um, Mr. Kaldeep Singh online. Mr. Singh, we're getting a lot of feedback from you. So if you could turn your speaker and turn your volume down. Yes, one second. I think that sounds better. Okay. So my name is Kudeep Singh and I'm a, I'm a sign manufacturer at Boho and Boca. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Graham, do I need to swear them in to the them in as as are um I, I think witnesses or no. This is a C of A, Jason. Do you think would you swear them? Yeah, yeah, it's a public hearing. I can swear it's them a public in. hearing. Mm -hmm. So uh, anybody who is going to be testifying, um, please first state your name. So we'll go back through and we went through the the interviews for testifying. We have Albie Monterosa, Sally Monterosa, and Kobe Singh. Um, Mr. Hyman is going to swear you in. Do you want to do them all three at once, Jason? Yeah, I'll or... do all three at once. If they could just okay. take their name and then we'll we'll do the oath. Okay. So just everybody raise your right hands and then uh, if one by one we could say your names. Albie, we'll start with you. Albie Monterosa. Sally Monterosa. And Albie. Do, do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're going to give this commission will be truthful and accurate to your ability? Yes. Yes. You're so sworn. Okay, great. Um, so, as as I said, this is an appeal uh, to a uh, condition to the conditions that the uh, minor applications committee reviewed on February twenty eighth. So, um, who would like to begin with your testimony as to what? Your, uh, you want to appeal and what, you, uh, what you're putting forth for this application. And Kathleen, just for the record, let me go through the, uh, the conditions. Uh, so this, this was a sign uh, and awning application that was approved for conditions. The conditions were uh, one, the proposed awning color and lettering are to be inverted to be a black awning with white lettering, which is consistent with the awning at the adjacent building. Number two, the skirt is to be straight edge and the scalloped edge is to be eliminated. This is consistent with the awning at the adjacent storefront. Paragraph three, the proposed wall mounted business sign coloring is to be inverted with a black panel and white lettering. Paragraph four, the facade is to be cleaned and all holes from prior sign installations are to be repaired. Paragraph five, any rear signage that is visible from the public rear parking area is to be submitted for issuance of a certificate by the commission. Paragraph six, the applicant shall obtain a zoning permit for the placement of any sidewalk sign at the business location. Seventh and final paragraph uh, slash condition is that any additions or changes in the signage are to return to the commission. With case that I could barely hear, can we turn that up a little bit? I'm sorry, Kathleen, what was your question? The audio with Jason, I could barely hear it. Is there a way to increase his volume? Um, Jason, you can adjust your audio volume control at the bottom of the screen. Second button from the right in the bubbles, it has three dots in it. If you click that, a menu will pop up, and then you can turn up your microphone volume in the speaker settings box. Okay. So Mr. Hyman just read through the seven conditions, which I have shown here on the screen, um, and I believe the applicant um, would like to appeal uh, the first and second conditions. Uh, they, we can let them, I guess, proceed with that. Kaldeep. Kaldeep. Yes. Can I speak? Go ahead, Kaldeep. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, uh, the, the scallop, um, my client do like to have the scallop uh, color. Also, I think um, the proposed colors were uh, off white, and that's what they want to stick with because of, uh, again, Submitted a, a PFI with all the um, uh, the decor of the of the salon and and the uh, where you know they feel that the the uh, white color fits more according to the, the the decor and whole theme of the salon and the cafe. So they do want to stick with the uh, with the white color. Am I right, Abby and um, Sarah? 
Yes. Yes. Graham, would you mind putting the image of the morning up on the screen? Can I can I speak now? Uh, yeah, let's just hang on one sec. Hang on one second. Let me just mute. Kaldeep, we're getting really a lot of feedback from you still. Um, so hang on one second. Let me just flip things around to show. Um, so the, the proposed signage plan was shown here in the, uh, do we have, here on the first page. Let me zoom in here so we can see. This is what the um, applicant had proposed was this white scalloped edge awning and the two white panel signs uh, for Boca Life and then the Boho Salon space. Is that correct, Albie and Sally? Yes, but it's not up on the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I paused the screen. Now you should see it on the screen. <laughs> Yes, that's what we are envisioning. Uh, yeah, let me know when it's, it's okay for me to talk. Go ahead, you can, yeah, you can, okay. you know, so, supplement Kaldeep's. Uh, so, um, to continue as to what Kaldeep was saying, um, for us, it's more of a branding thing. Um, we have invested a, an, in, in a significant amount of money over the years in our brand. Um, we have a current hair salon in Asbury Park that stands on brand. Um, that is doing really great. Um, and just to kind of give you guys a little bit of who we are, um, we are a mission-based hair salon that focuses on community, especially empowering women. So what we plan on bringing to Montclair is a lot of community value, you know, a lot of mission, a lot of vision. And the concept of the hair salon and the cafe together will create more of a community factor. Um, our idea is always to bring people together. And we just feel that um, it is very on brand to what we've already invested so much time into creating over the years. It's something that people travel very far to come and see us and they find us this way it's all over our website or Instagram. Um, and we just feel like it's very cohesive to who we are. Um, and there are other, um, like, you know, other great businesses on our street with white signage and black lettering. And we're just kind of hoping that you would consider, um, that we come with really honest and transparent hearts to really bring some good things to our community, to the community of Montclair. And we're just asking for just, if we can just continue to keep the brand consistent, just like any other brand like Target or Home Depot, we would just expect to carry the brand as we open multiple locations in different communities to be able to look the same so that our customers can find us easily and it could be, uh, our brand can benefit just the consistency all around. Thank Number you. two is the concerns the skirt of the awning. I, the the, uh, the uh, committee suggested that it be a straight edged and the scalloped edge is to be eliminated. Are you requesting the scalp to uh, it's portrayed the way? I, I do, you know, you know, I, I would love to, it to be scalloped, you know, the vision of the salon and the cafe, it's something like, you know, the, the interior decor and the amount of time and thought that has come into it to, to, to bring experience to the customer has really been the forefront of our entire thing. And we just um, would love to see it like fully embodied from the outside in, if that was okay with you guys. Okay, okay. so we're looking at the proposed awning color and the uh, proposed skirt of the, of the awning. And, and the signage as well. So it's one, two, and three, if everybody is. Okay, just so we know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so the way, okay, thank you. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll have questions from the commissioners. Okay. And then our, um, uh, our preservation consultant will speak and then we'll have a discussion, okay? So uh, why don't we begin with John, Mr. Reimnitz, your first step on the screen. First off. Any questions? Uh, yeah, just a, a, uh, a procedural question. This didn't come be before the HPC. So when just to kind of clarify process for you, Mr. Reimnitz, um, signage applications are what we consider minor applications. Uh, in one, in 347, 136.1, um, define certain applications for exterior modifications to be minor in nature, and those are reviewed and approved at the minor application committee. Uh, they okay. include a fence installation and signage as well. This application by the minor application committee on February 28th. 
Um, and at that meeting, the Minor Application Committee felt that they, um, that those three conditions as discussed, um, you know, changing the coloring of the awning to a darker color, uh, eliminating the scallop design, and then inverting the coloring of the signage were the three conditions imposed by the committee. Um, the applicant um, wanted to appeal that decision and the process as set forth in the ordinance is for the appeal to come before the full commission. So that's the purpose of tonight. Okay. I just wasn't at the, the February 20 whatever meeting. So. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it, that was just a, uh, the minor application is just two members of the commission. Okay. A um, couple questions. Uh, it looks like the rendering on the right uh, with the new signs, it looks like the way they're positioned, they slightly cover the soldier course of the brickwork. Is there any way we can lift up those signs so the soldier course of the brickwork isn't covered? Looks like it's that one, that's the existing. Yeah, right. so Mr. Blake, what Mr. Reinitz is asking about is um, as this sign is above that soldier course of brickwork, could this, the proposed sign also be aligned along that brick coursework? Mm -hmm. the, the, the former sign is lower and you know covers that coursework. So is there a, in a property? Uh, <laughs> so the, uh, you were wanting to have the new signs installed on the same level as existing old sign? So he, um, what Mr. Ryan is asking is, is if the proposed sign could be installed to align with the townhouse liquor sign. Okay, yeah, yeah, yes, that yeah. can be sure. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Remnitz. Um, I don't have any other questions. I have comments, but I don't have any more questions. Okay. Questions, Sorry, for the <laughs> questions for the applicant? Questions for the applicant? Ms. Kane Levy. Kane Levy. Um, you have a white awning at your other uh shop your other salon uh, i'm sorry do you have a white awning at your other salon and my question just is it seems like it would get very dirty and have you experienced that in your other salon we, we will maintain we will do whatever it takes to maintain because the aesthetic for us is super important um we, you know the outer appearance of our establishment has to look up to par with what we offer in the inside so we will always make sure that it is continuously cleaned and up to par with everything else that stands beside us. Okay, that was my only question. Right, Mr. Uh, Greenbaum. Hi, um, I have a question about the materials that you're uh, proposing for the actual substrate for the sun. Uh, is that a, can you describe what is the, the base substrate, uh, the lettering substrate, and if the letters are raised in any way, um, and then actually after that, I'd like to ask you about lighting. It looks like your gooseneck light, light's still in existence. Yeah, there's yes. existing gooseneck. Yeah, existing. So, so if you could describe to me the materials that you're going to be using. The signing is, is, uh, is made of the high density urethane. Um, it, it's the outdoor durable material and the letters are carved into it. The, the letters are not raised, but they are carved, they are, they are like V-groove and painted in black. Oh, oh so, so it's like an AZAC material? Uh, I'm not sure what AZAC is. It's a, it's a, a dense material. Is it, is it a, um, so it's a solid thick material? Yeah, there's a solid thick material. It is, it's, it's popular, it's called HDU. High density urethane. Okay. And, the, and the letter you're saying is actually going to be inscribed. It'll be actually uh, carved into the substrate and Correct. colored black. Correct. It's painted black. This is a sign that most of the uh, time that you will see when you enter into a new town and say, like, you know, welcome to Montreal Township and welcome to the township those this this is the same material it's, and it's fabricated in the same way oh hold on one second computer just please. uh 
um, think David froze, so we can move on I, to. I, why don't we move on, Mr. Rooney? Do you have any questions? I do not. Mr. Hyman, do you have any questions? No questions. Um, I have no. I'm sorry, my computer froze, and I had a I had to reopen. Um, okay. Will you see any of the the hardware, the mounting hardware, or will that all be kind of flush and 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 hidden? Yes. Okay, so basically this is hidden. Well, well this, uh, uh, this is a question, I guess, for the the sign gentleman, Mr. Singh. Will the sign be raised off the surface of the building? Yes, the sign. Uh, if you see the current drawing on on the screen. Uh, it is one and a half inch thick. You can see that it's raised off. And when you ask that, will there be a, a hardware visible? A yeah. hardware that, that will barely be visible is the bottom angle bracket that you can see that, that the sign is on. Is there any way, two questions. Is it possible to have, I want to be sure that the sign itself, the polyurethane sign is actually raised off the face of the building for, for uh, water, uh, um, you know, traveling through, will it be raised off, off the face of the building? The, the water is not going to travel through the sign because the, the angle bracket will go across the sign. So, so angle bracket that is holding on top of the sign is going all the way to right to left of the sign, which is, you know, going to block the water. It'll effectively be flashed at the top, and water will go around it. It'll go, it'll go, it won't go through. Yes. Okay. Um, I guess that's the end of my questions. Thank you. Uh, okay, then. I think if we may ask Mr. Conley for his comments. I think uh, Mr. Reimitz has a follow-up question. Oh. Sorry. All I can do is wave, right? I can't say anything. <laughs> I can see you. Okay. Um, what I just heard was you're going to flash the top of the sign. Is that what you're gonna really going to really do? You're going to cut into the brickwork and flash the top of the sign? No, no. We're not cutting in the, into the brick. It is installed on top of the brick, and it, the, the sign is raised off the wall. It's okay. So there will be a gap between the sign and the brickwork allowing water to flow through right and not get trapped mm, i'm sorry there, there won't be any gap between the sign and the wall the sign is there's got to be there's grout joints there's other things the water is going to get yeah if we can make that happen and you guys no. that, that, of course here, here here's our here's our concern we we want to not damage the building as much as possible. So, what we can do to not cause uh, a spa would be great. And then the other thing is, uh, where are you attaching? Are you attaching at the at the grout joints, or are you attaching through the brick? The well, wherever the sign will fall onto. I mean, if that is kind of. Um, you are saying that we will, we will screw the angle bracket? I mean, if, if that's a concern, we can screw it wherever you like. I mean, um, yeah, because the angle bracket is long, and we can we can uh, ha uh, position the screws a little bit here and there. OK. Um, what is the color of the frame? What is the color of the what, John, if you could just repeat that? Of the frame that this sign is inset into. Uh, the angle brackets that that would be painted same color as a sign white white okay that's it i'm done okay thank you mr conley are you are we still there i'm here <laughs> um okay so it, this is really the first time i'm looking at this application and it seems to me that the composition of the the storefront that there's really the three storefronts, right? You have the one all the way to the left, which is not yours, right? And then you have the two that we're talking about. Um, so just compositionally, it, it, it's kind of this one third, two third thing going on. Um, so I was wondering, do we need both the awning and the wall signs? Um, I just kind of want to harmonize 
the the all the storefronts together somehow. Um, that that's really just a design comment. As um, yeah. and the, the only thing that would kind of guide the decision making here that's laid out in the design guidelines um, really are over color. There's something stated in the guidelines about harsh colors or bright colors, which I don't think you really have. Um, and the awning colors and signs should be compatible with the architecture of the building. Um, I'm just throwing that out there. So that's for the, the commission to make up their own minds, but that's what's written in your um, commercial design guidelines. Can I see something? Yes. Um, okay. So. Um... I understand what you just said, and I, I agree with you. Um, as much as we would love to keep the idea that we proposed, um, I know it's entirely up to you all to decide. Um, we, I just want to be honest and say that if there's anything that I can hold true to our brand would be our sign and our logo, because it is black writing on a white background, and that is consistent throughout everything and every platform, every community, um, Associate, anything that we're associated with, that is how they know us by. So that I would really love to be consistent. Um, and if we had to talk about, you know, perhaps switching the awning to be more cohesive with our neighbor, I mean, that's something that we can definitely be flexible with. Well, wait, wait till you hear your discussion, our discussion before you uh, can see anything. <laughs> you know no. it's, it's been, but it's been a long six months of us just really working hard at this and considering yeah. everything else, we're just really kind of, you know, well, it's a dream of ours to be up there, and we're just right. Really we, I, 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 we, <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss it. We'll have a comment, comments, and we'll have opinions, and and then if there needs to be a concession somewhere along the line, you might want to save it for then. Okay. So before we begin our discussion, do you have anything else for the the applicants? Have any other comments to make? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> okay, um, I just want to, uh, I was part of the uh, minor applications committee that reviewed this originally and it, in our, really what we looked at was that the awning um, chops the building facade up into uh, the, the color that you're proposing really does not work with the facade and keeping the the idea of it being a unified facade. And that's why we, at, at, with our guidelines, at, thank you, Graham, um, discussed ha asking you to change the color of, of the awning. Um, I'll leave it up to the my fellow commissioners about, I understand the, your branding issue, um, and I think we'll leave that up to the commissioners to, to discuss that further. So with that, how about Mr. Reinitz? Do you want to start? Sure, this? sure. Uh, I, am I, I causing you feedback right now? No, okay. No. Um, I'm gonna disagree with the minor revisions, minor application. I think this actually is a, an improvement over what's there now. Um, if you go, if, uh, Graham, can you go to the proposed? Okay. You know, they've, they've got the proportions of something in the center, something on the right that balances the thing on the left. If we could get the signs to match in size, not necessarily the color, but match in size, the existing sign on the left, that I think would be an improvement. Uh, I think this really stand, I think this actually makes the facade stand out more, to tell you the truth. It brightens it up. I think it makes you focus on what's there. And I think it's, uh, I think the proportions, there you go. That's all I really have to say about it, other than just not damaging the brickwork. I'm done. Thank you. Sorry, Kathleen. Go ahead, oh. Kathleen. Sorry. Caroline. <laughs> so I, you're I agree with, am I, I'm. Yes, I, you're on. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with Mr. Reimnitz. I think it's fine. And I think the signs, if they could be made to align with the existing sign, that would be better. But I, I just want to 
congratulate you and thank you for moving forward with your business in this COVID crisis that we're seeing. And I think we need to do everything we can to encourage small businesses to come back and, and you know, move forward. So um, I think it's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Greenbaum. Um, I would concur with Mr. Reinitz. Um, I think that the white color is fresh. I think it's contemporary. I think Watchung Plaza is a wonderful community, uh, old school community um, village, and I think it's it's I think it's refreshing to see a new energy and, and a, a brighter brightness brought to the the uh, the, the village neighborhood. Um, I think the concern about maintaining the cleanliness of the umbrella material is something that you need to consider uh, in terms of practicality, but that, that's on you. Um, I would like to make the following suggestions regarding the signs above the awning. And by the way, I like the scalloping as well. I would like to suggest that you, if possible, raise the panels off the wall such a way that there's actually a space between the wall and the back panel of the sign, not only for water, but I also think it'll be, it's a much more sophisticated look. I think by raising the letter, so you don't see the framing at all. So it could be pin mounted into the, into the joints of the, uh, of the uh, cement brick in between the bricks uh, with the least amount of damage to the building. But I think it's nice to have that air floating around and you might even consider putting LED behind it in such a way that it kind of it, it's back back illuminated. That's up to you. So those are the, those are the two important points. The only other thing I'd like to propose, I don't know who the owner of the building is. Um, I know I'm not sure. Is it the owner of the Watch on Delhi who owns the building or no? The liquor store. The liquor. Dave Patel. Okay. They own the store building. I would, you know, I, I mean, if it's possible ask them potentially if they would participate and integrate their sign in a way that could be more cohesive. I mean, not to offend them, but the, their signage doesn't have any great distinction. And perhaps if there's a way they could integrate their awning and a sign to be compatible since he's the landlord, perhaps, and he might even make a contribution to the overall, you know, improvement. Because obviously he just did the second story addition so he must have great pride in his investment in the property. So perhaps you can work collaboratively and somewhat how integrate your signage and your branding in a way that's compatible with his and he can refresh his. So that's not kind of our purview, but that would be the ideal. He was um, envious of our sign when he saw the, uh, the mock-up and he was saying he'd be interested in that. Um, but I do know he also got a new sign, but, um, just recently, and he was kicking himself, saying, "I should have gotten a sign like you guys." So, so I think he's open minded. I think he's open minded. Okay. Well, maybe maybe right. can make some kind of arrangement, but that that would that I think that would mitigate a lot of people's concerns and give you the best best results. Okay, thank you, Mr. Greenbaum. Mr. Rooney, Steve, is he unmuted? There he comes. Back up. Um, I don't have any problems with it as presented. I like the idea that Mr. Greenbaum said it was lifting the sign off the wall, pin mounted, just to deal with that whole problem of getting moisture behind the sign. Um, the proportions are right. I don't have a problem with the scalloping. White is, is good and uh, as with Mr. Renton and Ms. K. Levy, I don't have any problems with that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mr. Hyman? Uh, yeah, I, I have to disagree with my colleagues. I, you know, looking at the... the oh, we can't hear you, Jason. Can you put up the volume, please? Yeah, I have it all the way up. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. That was yes. Better. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I was just saying that I... I tend to disagree slightly with my colleagues. I, uh, you know, I, I have to defer back to the guidelines and, you know, I'm, I'm more akin to want compatibility with the awnings. The signs I'm fine with. Um, I think the, the reason the minor applications committee inverted uh, was to be consistent with the desire for the black awning. 
but uh, having them uh, white with black lettering on them is fine, especially if it's a uh, brand you can sell. But uh, I'm, I'm more inclined to want to keep the condition on the black on the black awning. Okay, thank you. And as part of the um, the committee that met the minor applications, Graham, can you re refresh me as to who I was part of that? And Mr. Hyman, and was was there anyone else there for that no, meeting? It was just you and Mr. Hyman. Okay, um, I uh, really concur with Mr. Hyman at, as I think that uh, by changing the color of the awning. We are uh, in tune with our design guidelines, which we have written and you know we 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 look at to make our uh, decisions. Um, and as this is in an historic district, um, I think it's important that the facades maintain a continuity. I can understand your um, concern with branding and with the white signs, with the with the black lettering on the white. I think if the signs were smaller uh, in terms of uh, in, in size with the the red signs to the left, I think Mr. Greenbaum's uh, 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 suggestion of possibly speaking to that owner to make it all um, cohesive with white signs would be great. And then you would have the cohesiveness with the dark awnings. So um, I think we have uh, not the majority of our what do we do now Graham yeah, um, so before we so just I'll just kind of do this first before we go into any final motions for you know approval or you know whichever uh, way they manifest I just want to review I have four conditions um, that uh, should be a part attached to any approval um, so let me just go through those to make sure we have those on the record uh, the first proposed condition that I've heard is that um, the uh, proposed wall mounted signs are to match the size uh, and location placement on the building of the existing townhouse slicker store for so sign on the facade. Um, the proposed signs are to be installed into mortar joints only and not into any historic brick. Um, the proposed signs are to be set off the brick facade and pin mounted um, to allow for water uh, to flow freely behind the sign. Um, and any additions or changes to the proposed signage are to return to the HPC for review. So those are the four conditions that I had. Um, so, yes. and then as far as proceeding, you know, it, it's somebody needs to make a motion, I guess. So <laughs> either, either, in either direction. So well, go ahead. Thought is, um, I, I think Mr. Ryan has had his hand raised. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, those are four additional conditions, but they are appealing basically the color, right? And the scallops, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. yes. Correct. Yes, yes, the colors. So, well, essentially, we're going to be issuing a new certificate on this application. So, Can we vote on uh, various aspects of these conditions? Like all those conditions you just suggested, I don't think anyone has a problem with. I think the board is split on the, the color of the awning and the signs. Yeah, so I think, you know, there should be a motion in one direction and with those conditions attached and a motion in the other with those conditions attached. So. Yeah, I mean, my, my thought is I, I, I think uh, we can distill it down even further. I think I think everyone's on board with those conditions. I think everyone's on board with maintaining the white signage. And um, Kathleen, you correct me if I'm wrong. I think we're on board with them maintaining the scallops. I think the sole issue is whether we impose the condition on the black awning versus letting them go with the white. So, I mean, if that's the case, um, uh, my suggestion would just have it in, you know, an informal vote on whether we include that one condition or not. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote. If it passes, we include the condition. If it doesn't, we don't, and then we make a motion. Um, okay. All right, before we continue, I see it. Some Mr. Monterosa has his hand up. Yeah, yeah thank you. Just one more thing. Um, as it stands now, I know they are dark awnings, but they are two different color awnings. Um, one is more a lighter blue. I'm sorry, a darker gray, and one is black. I'm sorry, darker blue, and one is a black one. They're really not matching the two awnings as they exist now. And being that we will take up the majority of the building, the white awning actually makes it more, more symmetric in visual context. 
<laughs> All right, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Hyman, what was your suggestion as far as uh, taking an informal vote? Yeah, let's take a roll call vote on just the issue of Beyond in Color. Yes, so because I think everybody is in agreement with the white signage with the black lettering and the scallops are okay, and it really is now down to the color. Okay. Okay, so um, so the, uh, we'll do first uh, the white awning as presented. Um, so uh, I'll do a roll call commission members um, in favor of the white awning. Uh, Ms. Kane Levy? I'm in favor of the white awning. Mr. Reimnitz? I'm in favor. Mr. Greenbaum? I'm in favor of the white awnings, and if you can get the landlord to uh, coordinate with you, that's even better. Mr. Bruning? I'm okay with the white awning. Uh, Mr. Hyman? Uh, I'm not in favor. And Ms. Bennett? I'm not in favor. Okay, so the white awnings uh, are, are the majority favorite, so those will be part of the approval. Okay, so uh, okay. I'll make a motion to approve uh, with what was it the four or five conditions that you were reading this is the four conditions four conditions that there was a consent is on I second all in favor Aye. 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 okay thank you all very much thank all right. you good luck all right. good luck good all luck right. I look forward to visiting with you <laughs> having a coffee <laughs> John <laughs> I have a <laughs> Okay, Mr. Okay. Hang on, Kathleen. Mr. Singh, I'll follow up with you all by email. Okay, we need to move on to other items this evening. So. Okay. No okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, we're on to our next um, application, which is also an, an appeal of approval. Uh, this is application 2020-0920 Church Street, the Green Room. It's the appeal of approval with conditions by the Minor Applications Committee regarding the installation of a new wall-mounted signage for business in the Town Center Historic District. And this, um, this application was also reviewed on the 28th. Um, and do we have um, the applicants? Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hey, hang on, Kathleen. Um, Mr. And Mrs. Monterosa, I'll follow up with you all by email, okay? So, um, sending up, I'll, I'll connect with you tomorrow. We need to move on to other business this evening. So, okay. Just, you know, I, don't, I don't know if Thanks you missed for it, help. but uh, stay you, well. You did approve the application. What? Wait a minute. I, we can't hear. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So, we'll follow up with you all, okay? Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Jason, did uh, we, were you saying something? Oh yeah, because they they had cut out right when we were voting. I noticed. Oh, they did. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's why they jumped back on. <laughs> I'll send them an email as we're going through this next one. So. Okay. So the next application. Okay. So let me just pull um, up. Yes. Do you have all the information? It's application twenty twenty dash oh nine twenty Church Street. Um, this was this is also an approve uh, an appeal. Uh, of approval with conditions by the Minor Application Committee. This was heard um, by the Minor Application Committee on February 28th as well. Mm -hmm. um, is anybody here? There we go. Is Who's here from the, the green room as representative? Hi, Eric. Um, just, well, uh, hi. Right. Hi. <laughs> we, have, we have one, one representative? Yes, ma'am, just me, yep, I'm the owner of the store. Okay, could you identify yourself and, and your relationship to the application? Sure, my name is Derek Michael Vida, and I'm the owner of the Green Room at 20 Church Street. Uh, my partner is my father, but he's my silent partner, gave me a nice loan to open the store, so I'm just be here representing the store by myself tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Good. Uh, so can you hear me? We need to have you sworn in, Mr. Can you hear me? Right, I'm just can checking. Can you hear you, Harry? Yes. Okay, because my computer broke and I got another one, so. Okay, uh, could you raise your right hand, please? You solemnly swear the testimony you're going to give this commission is truth, all the truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Okay, and state your name, please. You already did, but state it again in your relation to the applicant. Sure, it's Derek Michael Vida, 
and I am the owner of the Green Room, operating under Green Vision NJ LLC. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. So, um, Mr. Hyman, do, we, do you want to uh, discuss the sure. uh, the approvals that we had uh, suggest uh, the conditions with the approval that we had suggested on the 28th? Sure. Graham, so if you could bring a, that up. This was an approval with four conditions. Uh, they are as follows. The sign is to be of aluminum, consistent with the recommended sign material in the historic design guidelines. Condition two, the white sign background is to be eliminated and replaced with a dark color, such as black, to be more consistent with the overall building. Condition three, the applicant shall obtain a building permit for the placement of any sidewalk sign at the business location. And condition four, any additions or changes in signage or the returns of the permit. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Uh, Wadid, do you, can you, uh, Graham, can you go back to the picture of the, of the facade? And can we just explain that, is this the current facade or did you superimpose um, what you're doing on the facade next to, to the green room? No, I'm sorry, this is the current facade, correct? Yes, ma'am, I just digitally rendered what the signage would look, okay. the white background, the green letters. Okay, so um, your, your, um, your uh, application is really a sign application and you are appealing because you would like to keep the white background. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so, is, is there any, anything else? Materials? Uh, if I just may, just so you guys know, number three, I did obtain a sidewalk permit already that was approved by the town and paid for, and I have the permit if you guys need it. Mm -hmm. uh, I was approved for that when I opened the location um, just in the beginning of March. Oh, okay. And the other question, Derek, that was asked, um, are you okay with an aluminum material for the sign panel? Yes, absolutely. The signage I currently have in my Hoboken location is made out of PVC with an aluminum background. If that's something that you guys don't want, I can figure out how to make it with an aluminum background, but just my current sign guy normally does PVC. So whatever you want for the signage material, I can have done. I'm just really concerned about the color. Okay, great. Thank you. Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, that will what we'll do is we'll have questions from the commissioners. Mr. Reimnitz, do you have any questions? Well, uh, before, before, oh, you sorry. Explain the, uh, the, um, uh, the basis for your uh, preference for the color. Sure, absolutely. Branding uh, or you know, something else. Yeah, absolutely. So my starters, uh, I'm Derek, and it's nice to see everybody. You guys all look wonderful on camera, so thank you for joining us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did mock trial in college, so I, I enjoy this stuff. It feels refreshing. Um, okay, so for starters, I opened up my first location in Hoboken about a year ago. I'm just trying to keep branding consistent like the previous applicant. It's something that I worked hard on. I like the white with the green. Uh, reason being, I took some notes. Um, for starters, I have a trademark uh, pending already. I have a registration with the current logo with the white and the green. My lawyer has been working hard on and also charging me way too much money to get done. So I'd like to keep that the same so I don't have to change that trademark application. Uh, for starters, I'm just trying to keep consistent corporate branding. This is my first business. I'm 25 years old, and I really would like everything to stay white because everything in my store is white. Um, I worked really hard on making that location on Church Street beautiful on the inside. I restored the floors. I brought in a, a bunch of old barn wood to really look and be adjacent to a lot of the antique shops. I brought in antique furniture. I brought in some beautiful paintings to highlight the art on the block. Uh, so for me, it's super important to stay with white. Um, Inappropriate usage of colors may confuse corporate branding. So because my whole book and location is white and green, I prefer to keep it white and green. And other than that, it's just, I am a CBD business. So this is alternative medicine. It's holistic and white branding for these types of businesses is dominant or black branding may not look the same. This is supposed to be safe and inclusive. It's a transparent honor and, and friendly business. And these are all types of traits that represent the color white. Okay, thank you. Uh, Graham, do you have a shot of the of that uh, historic uh, photo shot that we had seen? I do not. I was not able to locate the historic photo. Okay. Um, but we do have, uh, let me, just give me one second. I can show the, the survey form has a historic photo um, that shows, um, you know, just kind of the, the old condition of this, the building storefronts with that prior to the um, waterfall awnings that are there now. Um, just give me one second. I can pull that historic photo. Ma Ma'am, wasn't this a woman's clothing store? Uh, we had this uh, application yes. years yes, ago. Yes, this was the location for the little black dress. That's correct. 
And at that time, we discussed taking the awnings off and putting up the signboard. And the signboard at that time uh, was a black background. Well, I thought the, the conversation was the idea that, you know, whether or not we could require every building, every storefront to have a matching awning, which that was a big discussion a couple of years yes. ago on the same property. And this was the, this was the application actually the same space, but it was the little black dress. Right, but we also so thank you, Graham. Um, we had a photo, a, a vintage photo that was, I guess, predated this that had no the the facade was totally clean, with no awnings and um, small sign bands on top of of the windows. So, um, you know what the what the current uh, thinking is of the commission and also uh, within our design guidelines is to have some type of consistency with the facade of the whole building. And I discussed with Graham, this building does not have a master, master signage plan. So um, we can't enforce, uh, you know, every, everybody to have the same uh, uh, treatment of, of their individual storefront facades. So um, there was a discussion about three years ago, I guess, Graham, with the little black dress where- it's Four years ago. At this point. Four years ago, okay. Yeah, and essentially, you I mean, the commission agreed, you know, at that time that um, one of the waterfall awnings could be removed to expose the, um, you know, historic transom above. Um, and so this storefront is the first uh, that's done this. Uh, actually, an applicant has just filed for Mundo Vegan to do the same thing, to remove this awning um, and expose the historic transom as well. So, um, you know, I think it's one of those things that we're, the commission is, you know, moving forward as these applications come in, um, the building will turn over and we'll be able to expose the historic storefronts that remain there um, to this day. So um, the subject application here this evening, though, that awning was already removed. Um, this previously was a little black dress. That was the first storefront that did this. Um, they had a sign, pan, sign panel in here that was 18 inches tall that spanned the width. It was in black color with raised dimensional lettering for the little black dress. Um, and here, Mr. Um, Waida is, um, you know, just proposing his sign um, with a white background and then the um, lettering for his business. So. Hey, Graham, I have the photo. If you guys can all see on my end, that's what little black dress was previously. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a copy of that as well. Um, we, I can pull And Graham, can we mention that the, um, the the application to the adjacent building is proposing a black sign ban? Um, I, I mean, I guess it's part of their branding, but you know, th they were proposing a black sign ban. So, okay. Do you have that picture, or uh, I do? Just forward. give me one second. Just pull it up on the screen. There you go. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, great. Thank you, Graham. So are we ready to start questions of the applicant? Um, Mr. Reimnitz? Okay. Um, does this sign have any thickness to it? And how is it attached to the facade behind? Sure, so pending the approval for what you guys would like for the material to be, this sign is normally screwed directly into the existing holes from the previous business. So I'm gonna be following the exact pattern that Little Black Dress had with their signage and I'll be using their existing holes so I don't make any new holes in the uh, historic infrastructure of the building. So does it have any thickness to it, this sign, or is it just a flat piece of metal? Well, pending what you guys would like the sign to be, if it's gonna be sheet metal, it's gonna be about a half inch or less. If it's gonna be on PVC, it can be anywhere from three quarters to an inch in thickness. Okay. Um, That's my current signage in Hoboken. It's just under an inch in thickness. Uh -huh. uh, I don't have any other questions. Okay, Ms. Kane-Levy? I don't have any questions. Uh -huh. Mr. Greenbaum? Yes, the lettering on the sign, can you describe that? 
what kind of material uh, is being used for the actual lettering and how is that mounted onto the sign? Sure. So the, I'm just going to go based off the existing signage I have just for reference. So the existing signage, the letters are made from PVC. Then that PVC is just one big piece that's going to be molded together like this. What happens is those laser jets, they cut over the PVC. It's about a three inch piece of material or two inches. They cut over it so that all the letters and the background is all um, together. It's just one piece of big PVC so that there's nothing else that's loose or hanging that can potentially fall off. The only thing that has to get screwed in is the whole signage. Now, if you guys wanted me to do the sign out of metal, the signage can have adjacent letters on it that would be screwed into it. Otherwise, if it's PVC, it's just all one piece and they cut it out symmetrically. So when you say it's cut out, you're saying that the letters are flush with the substrate, the background. Yes, it's all one piece of plastic that's carved into so that the letters don't have any water in the background and they don't expose to any other residue. It's just one piece of plastic. Right. It's almost like an insult. Is it, yeah, I guess Mr. Greenbaum's question, Derek, is um, are these, is the lettering raised or is the lettering recessed from, with oh, respect to this panel? The lettering is raised. It comes out about a half inch off of the back panel because it's cut into the PVC. I see. And is it illuminated in any way? No. Um, and uh, I, I have a question for Graham. Graham, the the, the lettering dimensions um, within specs for our townships ordinances. Yes, it, it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that answers my questions for now. Sorry, Kathleen, I had to mute you for a second. Okay, sorry. Mr. Rooney? Um, this is more of a question to the board. And in the secretary's guidelines, I don't think we have to, anything to say about color. Am I right? Go ahead, Mr. Connolly. Go ahead, Mr. Connolly. <laughs> oh, I just said that's correct. <laughs> no more questions. Uh, Mr. Hyman. I had a question. Um, did you have any plans or proposals to make any modifications to the storefront itself, like the uh, the window framing and the bulkhead? No, I think the location is absolutely beautiful. When I first saw it, I fell in love with it. I love the original door. The black paint on the outside was already there. The original stone on the bottom. All I have to do is just put some beautiful flowers in those pots, and we'll call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's all I, have. Uh, I have a question about the sign. Um, the the previous sign, what was that made of? And is there a lip that or a recess on that sign band so that the three quarter of an inch, if it's PVC, will it extend out over the uh, top bar of the window? Top bar of the transom? Is that a question for me? Yes. Okay, so the when I took off the previous signage from Little Black Dress, when they took it off, the current signage left a kind of a mold, you know, or residue over time. So basically, I'm going to be using the exact same measurements to cover the spottage and shadowing that their old signage created. Now, I'm following the exact signage they had. So if their signage came up just about a half inch to, to three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to be replicating the exact same thing. Uh, the wall is flat. So the signage will have a lip on the top and on the bottom, but the sides you won't be able to see because the stone on the sides comes out, so it covers the signage. Okay. So, um, and where the top metal frame of the of that top window um, mm -hmm. is that flush with the back or is with the facade backing material, or is that is there is there a little bit of a step there that the sign would sit on? So the, the frame of the window the frame is adjacent with the stone. They're flat. They're flush against one another. So there's no I lift. See. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the thinner the sign um, would alleviate any any um, protrusion of on, on the top. I I, under, I understand. Okay. Thank you, um, Mr. Khan. Do any other questions from the board members? No. Okay, Mr. Conley. Can we have your opinion as to um, sure so, this application? So just, just two suggestions, maybe. Um, the storefront, the metal and, and marble storefront is such a nice storefront. The sign as it's rendered here in the photograph, 
looks like it's kind of part of the metal storefront. It would be nice if we could have a small separation between the sign and the and the metal storefront uh, um, between you know the bottom of the sign and the top of the of the storefront, just to read that it's a completely separate uh, feature. Sure. So just so I understand, the metal ends here, and then the stone starts completely adjacent to it. You'd like the signage to be a little bit higher so that you can see some of the exposed stone? Yeah, just so it doesn't read as one one thing. Sure. Yeah, no problem. I was just following the uh, instructions I received to follow the exact 18-inch requirement, the maximum. So I've measured it out at 18 inches, but I have no issue. Right now, it's currently 16 and 3 quarters. So I can make it like that and just raise it a bit higher so that you can see the stone. And if you're going to do that, maybe the same things on the side. I don't know if that would look any better or not. Yeah, the, um, the, the width is uh, blocking off the um, marks that the previous signage created. That, that's kind of like, it's almost like burned into the stone from the residue. So when I take that signage off, there's a, a blank spot in the middle, and then the rest of the sign on the outside is covered in black. Like so. How about adding, how about adding a black border to the sign? Um, that's I a can, good idea. Um, it's just, it's not part of my current branding for my location in Hoboken, so I would like to keep it as is, but if that's something that would allow me to, you know, be approved with the white signage, then I can add a black background for you guys. Not a button, uh, not just a border. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I prefer it all white, but if you guys, you know, with your blessing, would like a black border, then I can figure out how to make that happen. Oh, okay. Um, any other questions? No, okay. Oh, I have um, Yes. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, you know, the, the paperwork we got in the mail and this rendering, the proportions are different. Is what we're looking at now is what's being proposed? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, okay. the, what was sent in the packet was the older set that was submitted. Oh. Okay, that's it. Yes, I was advised to change the measurement of the green room actual lettering to match the current lettering with my temporary signage because I was told by someone who works in your town hall that the current lettering sizing looked more appropriate with the existing signage. So I adjusted it for you guys. Oh. Can I make one other suggestion? Instead of um, raising the sign up, maybe we shorten the height of it to, to achieve the same thing. I don't want to bump the sign up too high. I kind of like sure. the height of it. But Do you have a preference on how much I, stone you would like to be shown on the bottom in inches so I can make sure I meet those measurements? I don't know. I'll defer to the board on that. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, well, if I could just add that during our discussion for the minor application committee meeting, uh, again, it, it, it deals with the consistency of the facades and the storefronts of the facade with one building, that there have some consistency. So um, I know, Mr. Rooney, we're not, uh, we're not uh, approving color, however, we are, we do have a say in consistency of what happens along the facade and fortunately or unfortunately that includes color. So um, I do like the suggestion and I hope the rest of the commissioners do as well of putting a border, a black border, which would I think lend um, a little bit con more continuity to what's going on for the adjacent building as well. So uh, Mr. Reimnitz, do you want to chip in? Yeah, uh, before Tom said it, I thought. Go ahead, John. I, I muted. It's Kathleen. We're getting feedback on it. She's muted. Okay. okay. Uh, before Tom suggested it, I was thinking, you know, if this if this sign was framed like the windows were framed, you know, um, then with like a, I don't know, was it two inches or two and a half inches with some sort of frame and not just some sort of black applied uh, vinyl that was actually set in a frame, then I think uh, it, I could uh, go along with it being a white background. That's all I have to say. Okay, Ms. Kane-Levy? Um, I, I agree a frame would help, and I don't care if it's a, a black border or an actual frame. Um, but I just want to make the rest of the commissioners aware that the um, minor applications committee reviewed a sign for the neighboring storefront 
And I think we want them to be consistent in terms of placement and size. So, you know, if we're talking about raising it a little, then I think there's a question about how to deal with the one that was previously approved. So I'm okay with it in its current location, utilizing the existing penetrations, which is a good idea, and just adding some kind of a, a border. And it would, it would just make it look a little bit more finicky. But I appreciate that white is the color of your branding, and I think that's important to maintain. Mm -hmm. that. Uh, if, if I may, Roger next door, who that application is for, him and I have been discussing measurements. So whatever you guys decide on for the signage, him and I will make uh, adjacent signs and measurements so that it looks the same. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Greenbaum. Okay. Um, I have some good thoughts here for you. Um, may I ask you the following question? The sure. color green that you're, you, you are proposed here in your presentation, are you, um, do you have some flexibility in the, in the actual tone of the green? As long as it's green, would you be willing to go a little, uh, change the tone just a little bit? Um, no, it's not possible. It's my current branding and it's all over every product in my store and online. So I'd like to keep that as is if possible, please. Okay. Um, well, I was I was going to suggest first of all let me just confirm the the uh, the mold the uh, metal um, window frame what color is that is that a black or is it a bronze? It's a very dark black that's faded over time, so it's kind of giving a almost charcoal color in the photo. Okay. Um, the, what I, where I was going with that a little bit is that there's green in the marble um, at the base of the facade. And if there was a way that you could, your green could be, uh, uh, pick up a little bit of a tone in it that reflects from that stone of the, mar the marble, I think that would really let it hang. I think people would feel a, a really nice, and I think people would feel better. I, 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 I'm guessing my fellow commissioners might appreciate that. Just, I'm not saying it has to match, but just, Pick up that pick up a little bit of that tone. Um, I do I don't I do agree um, with the idea of having a reveal of maybe a half an inch to an inch of the uh, limestone behind it or the stone. Um, you mentioned that it's discolored. I think my colleagues would agree with me if it's possible before you mount your sign if that could be cleaned before because that could very well be mold or mildew. That accumulated from water behind of the previous sign, and if that could be, you know, whether you use bleach, a trisodium phosphate, or a pa and power washing to get that clean, and then when you expose that extra inch, you won't have any of that, um, you know, that uh, residue. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with the frame. I also think that the material for the background should be. Um, let me say this. I think the lettering ideally should be pin mounted lettering. It should be raised off the surface. I think it's a very, very elegant storefront. It's, it's, a, it's an art deco storefront. And if you could raise your letters off the, um, off the back, the, the substrate, um, maybe a, a metal raised letter or made to look like a, you know, uh, not, not metallic in a shiny sense, but just, um, the raised letter, dimensional letters raised off the uh, sign would be much more elegant and fit, fitting with the building. Sure. Y yes, sir. So the current signage that I have in my Hoboken location, the letters do raise off the signage of the yeah. background. So I plan on, on doing this one the same. But and I, I, I would I would say raise not just, you know, projecting out, but actually lifted off that there's space behind, hollow space behind, they're pin mounted. So the letters float off the surface. You know, I don't know, are you familiar with pin mounted lettering? It's a very elegant, and very, mm -hmm. very chic and appropriate for this type of building. Yeah, I'm familiar with it, sir. It's just a matter of cost and who can make the sign for me. We're all experiencing quarantine. It's I'm on low budget. I've closed this location for two months already. I just reopened. I just paid my landlord for several months of rent without being open. And I'm trying to do the most cost efficient option for myself, for my business, and also to make sure I please you guys in the historic commission with the current signage proposed. I think, I think um, 
you'll get a, 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 you'll be pleased yourself if you consider, and we'll discuss it as commissioners, the idea of doing raised pin mounted lettering and your logo, and that can be done. Um, there's plasma cut. I mean, I'm not supposed to tell you all this stuff, but you, you, you'll find people can laser cut or plasma cut the letters in exactly your logo and then and raise it. Um, I think that would be appropriate for this storefront. Okay, thank you, Mr. Greenbaum. Mr. Rooney, do you have any, uh, are you, Steve? Yes, um, I like the idea of, of putting a border around the sign and um, not so much making the border on the on the bottom more than the than the frame. I think the frame takes care of your border on the bottom, but going around uh, the the top and the sides. Um, coloration, I don't have any problems with, and uh, the method of their cutting out the the letters and things, I think, is fine. That's it. Your chair is on mute, Graham. Sorry about that. I have, some, I have some more comments. Go ahead, John. Mm -hmm. um, I thought uh, David had a good comment about the color green. And I'm looking at the green that's in this packet of the existing Hoboken location. And it's not the same green that I'm looking at on the screen. So if yeah. green is so important to you, uh, I'd like to know what green we're really talking about. Yes, yeah. sir. So depending on the photo, the angle, the light, the time of day, and also your printer or your phone, the green will look different, but the same sign maker who made my sign in Hoboken is going to be making my signage for Montclair, and that color green is consistent across my branding. And also, just to remind the board, I do have a trademark already pending for this color green and the white, so I'd like to keep it as consistent okay. as possible. Please. Well, I don't know if you answered my question. I don't know what green we're talking about. Uh, it's the green that's pictured in both photos. They just look different depending on the photo, the printer, and also the time of day with light. So the green is a light green. It's most similar to the color of the top of my top boy right here. Like a chartreuse. Okay. It's truer to what's up there on Church Street now, correct? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. The Hoboken photo, that photo was yes. printed on printer paper without the proper ink. You know, it needs to be on a gloss or a semi-gloss in order to highlight the tones of that green. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's it. Mr. Hyman, do you have a, any comments? Uh, yeah, I, I have to, you know, echo some of the comments of the fellow commissioners. I think you know, putting a frame or a border. You're, fa you're, you're fading out. I think having a frame or a border alleviates, I think, uh, the concern with the all white um, uh, sign and, and the potential clash with the uh, black framing of the windows. Um, so I, I'm happy to group it with the white background um, you know, without the condition that it changed, you know, provided that it's too. Can't hear you, Jason. Yeah, I can't adjust Jason's volume, so that's. Oh. That's, yeah. <laughs> I don't have that ability. It's all the way up. I don't know why. Uh, hold hold it into your computer. What's that? Hold the mic closer to your mouth, maybe. It's right up against my mouth. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, like I said, I'm I'm fine, uh, utilizing a a border or a frame, add that level of consistency with the framing of the windows. Can I can I uh, suggest that the frame frame color as close to uh, try to match the window frame color? Does that make, does everyone agree with that? Make that as a suggestion. Okay. I think we would just black to make it more compatible with the black um, that was there previously, and also with the with the uh, next door neighbor. Okay. Black of the window frame. Say that again. No, I was suggesting it just it blend with the picture the the same color as the black of the of the window frame, which is black, but it's just like a charcoal black. 
Well, I don't think we're trying to, he's trying to duplicate the, the window frame. I think, it, you know, you, you want it to stand, you want it to stand out and be a sign, be different. I, I have no problem with it being black with the, uh, the frame. Um, but we haven't, we haven't, uh, the, I, I can't find my notes now, but the, um, we had suggested it be an aluminum sign, and we haven't made a decision, um, a recommendation as to whether it be aluminum or PVC. So what are, what are the commissioner's thoughts on that? Ma'am, if I may, can I make two points, please? Sure. So for starters, the black existing paint that's on the current frame of the windows is aged over several decades. So in right. order to match that, it's going to be very difficult. I will do my best, but I can't promise that the black that's going to be the border printed today is going to match that current black. Um, I can try my best. Um, second, no, I forgot my second point. What was the last thing you said? I'm sorry, miss. About the <laughs> sign, the material of the sign. So the reason I, I, just, I do PVC is the fact that it's very light. So because when it's mounted, it is screwed in, it's screwed in tightly. I like PVC just because it's light and for any risk of any hazards in the future, hanging any types of metal, are a little bit more dangerous. So the PVC is just cost efficient. It's also lighter and it's easier to adjust colors opposed to metal signage that then needs different types of brackets, framing, screws, bolts, and it just becomes a larger hassle. And I prefer not to make any other holes into the building. Did, did anyone discuss the uh, idea of the sign being raised off the face of the building so that it, water can travel through it? Like we talked about at the very, John brought that up at the very beginning. Did anyone mention that again? I don't recall. Well, I think that was one of the condition uh, sign attached attach with the, the existing holes. Uh, as with the with the previous uh, application, that the there be it be mounted mounted not flush with the building, but a little bit further uh, out from the building. Right, projected from the face of the building. Right. Well, that's that's we, but we still haven't. As I said, the um, minor applications committee recommended that the sign be made of aluminum. So, I, what, I, what are the other? I agree with that. You agree with aluminum? aluminum. I think it should be aluminum as well. Huh? Yeah, I would. Can I ask the question of the applicant about it's the PVC that's carved down and it's on an aluminum background? So the P, the PVC it's it's one flush piece of plastic that's that they use lasers to just cut out the letters so that the letters aren't detached from the actual signage so it's all one piece you don't have to worry about them falling off coming off falling down any water getting behind it it's all flushed together they're cut symmetrically around the plastic it's just right. a type of signage that like I said I'm I'm a younger I'm 25 and this is kind of how people put up their signage these days it's just an easier step instead of molding several pieces right. of metal together right. Yeah, I had no problems with it being PVC. You do or don't? Do not. Uh, I think if the mold, if the black border was projected just like the green letters are, and they, and it had a dimension to it as mm -hmm. a frame, I would vote for that. I would. Right. I wouldn't have a problem with the PVC there. What about the letters? Should they be raised or not raised off the face? I, I think, you know, it does become an, it, that's a very nice detail, but I think uh, I'm hearing a, you know, a plea from the applicant about costs. So I think but that uh, not, uh, doesn't that defeat, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think we should, I'm not saying whether he should or shouldn't do raised letters, but what I, but I do think that we have to, we, uh, as a commission, while we can't be blind to cost, we also have to be res respectful to our role to protect the building and, and the, the quality. This happens to be probably one of the finest pieces of architecture mm. in Montclair. Actually, yes, but I don't believe that the signage and how the signage is put together has anything to do with the architecture of the building. Well, I think it, it's it's the it's effectively like the jewelry of the building. It's the jewelry, but it's not the structure. It's not the design. 
Otherwise, we would have all the signs looking like they are at Rock Rockefeller Center. Oh, and that'd be great. Right. <laughs> so, are we suggesting then <laughs> suggesting that it be made of aluminum? Um, I, I'm, I'm going to vote with uh, or suggest that I agree with Steve that it could be PVC. And if the if the letters are raised a half inch from the back white background, and the frame the black frame or the charcoal black frame that goes around is also raised from the white background, uh, I would think that's perfectly fine. That's me. Yeah. Can I just ask again from the applicant a question? Are you saying that the letters with the PVC can be raised? I thought they were carved into the PVC. I will show you an example, ma'am. I just grabbed it right now. So this is the current signage in Hoboken. As you can see, the white background, you can see how the letters are raised a bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can see when I move the phone around how they kind of look 3D. Oh. Can you show it back again? I'm sorry, I, I can't. Maybe, maybe you can see the shadow, David. No, yeah. I, I, I just, my screen, the way it's set up right now. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me click on your... So it's, exactly. raised, it's actually raised. Okay. Right. That's the current signage. So this is what I plan on replicating with your blessing. <laughs> okay. What, how do you feel, Caroline, about PVC? I can accept that. And who else do we have? Mr. Hyman? Hyman, what about PVC? Uh, I mean, I, I prefer the, uh, the aluminum, uh, even though it's old. Yeah, I, I agree. I prefer the aluminum as well. So, uh, uh, what do, so we, I think we're divided. Um, um, I'd like to know, Graham, would you, do you recall what we approved at the gelato shop? It was an aluminum flat panel sign. Okay. I think it should match what we approved at the gelato shop then, which is aluminum. Aluminum. And the gelato sign had raised letters, is that correct? I don't know if it did. No. No, it was a flat sign. Right? It was flat. Flat sign, yes. Okay. With with all due respect to the board, my business and his business have nothing to do with one another. And I have no <laughs> issue keeping things symmetrical in size, but expecting us to match in color or identity is completely I'm not suggesting you match the color, just the material. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, I was originally told that the black background would match his background. So I was going no, no. Right now, I'm talking about the material. Yes, ma'am. So the this is his first location. This is going to be my second, and I'm working on a third. Um, so I'd like to keep things as symmetrical as possible. Um, you know, what my neighbor does is really irrelevant to what I'm doing for for my location. So with your blessing, I would like to make this what you want with the colors that I already have trademarked, and really just move forward from there. Well, I don't think we're, we're, we, we have a problem with the color as much as with the material. That's what we're discussing now, aluminum or PVC. Um, so, Kathleen, Kathleen, may I read from the, um, the guidelines for signs under, the, under your design guidelines? Please. Yes, please. Under, under materials, um, number eight, it says use traditional materials for new signs. Construct new signs out of materials such as wood and aluminum glass and metals such as copper, bronze, or aluminum. Ensure metal signs have a matte or subdued finish. Fan blasted wood signs are appropriate. The use of neon may be appropriate for mid-20th century storefronts. That's under materials in the guidelines for signs. Right, that's pretty clear. Yep. So, so what do you want us to why don't you go one by one around because we've you've done questions but you haven't done comments have you we did yes. Comments. yes we were ended comments we've okay. ended comments okay. we're in, we're in the we're in the comment discussion so i think you know i let me i'll review the conditions and then i think someone just needs to make a motion and then we'll see you know a motion for the an aluminum sign and then we'll see how the um Commission uh, re responds to that. Um, let me, I'll just review the couple of conditions that I had. Um, I think it was just two um, that the applicant is to employ a, uh, a black frame border around the proposed sign um, and that the proposed sign is to be mounted um, in the same location um, 
and then that this proposed sign is to be stood off the face of the building um, to allow for uh, airflow behind the sign. Well, also that um, one other comment that was made by um, our consultant suggesting that the sign be raised just a, a small bit to have a bit of a reveal to separate it from the window frame. So I've heard conflicting comments on that because as Ms. Kane Levy just alluded to, we did review the application for the adjacent storefront and they are not raising the sign. They are aligning it with the top of the storefront system. So um, we don't really have recourse to go back and modify that approval that's been rendered. Um, yeah. The previous sign here, Little Black Dress, was aligned with the top of the storefront as well. Okay. I have one more condition then to add to this, mm -hmm. which is uh, that the existing cracks in the existing facade be grouted before they get before this sign covers up uh, this, the uh, facade. And cleaned. And cleaned, yeah. Okay. To remove residue and or, you know, mold right. will do. Okay. Cleaned. And the question for the board, who that's going to be a building responsibility and the sign application is separate from the building. So that's going to be something to do with the landlord. Well, it's a condition of the application, is it not? Uh, can I ask a question? That's a good question. You know, is it our responsibility as the HPC to make sure people take care of their their buildings in the historic district? Hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with us requiring when a new sign goes in, a condition being that the condition of the the, the material facade, you know. Be I'm just asking a question, David. I'm just asking a question. Is that, no, I agree with I you. Answer the question. Isn't that isn't that one of the things? Yes, that and we and that's one of that. Usually, we do that in a condition. One of the conditions is to clean um, any existing, um, you know, dirt or or cracks. But specifically here, you would have to work with the landlord then um, and tell him that that needs to be done. I think that's important. Yes. I don't think yeah. our building maintenance laws have any special uh, requirements for historic things in the historic district, uh, as opposed to other buildings in terms of maintenance and you know, uh, condition. Really? If it, I'm not sure. Are you sure about that, Ira? There's nothing. No, in I'm, not sure. I'm not sure, but I'll take a look. But I'm not aware of any. Do you mean you think there's the ordinances have special required in historic district that there'd be sort of special maintenance requirements? I'll take a look. How's that? Because uh, I haven't acted, I haven't come across any, but I haven't really looked. So I mean, I don't know how we can, as Historic Preservation Commission, suggest something that just creates a situation that just over time just slowly contributes to the deterioration of the right. facade. And it roots the facade. No, what I'm saying is, let's say he puts up a white sign and he doesn't maintain it and it's dirty or uh, it gets frayed and something like that. I'm not sure that he, uh, there's any, the regulate building maintenance regulations so it wouldn't be any different for, for here as, uh, not that he would want to have a frayed sign up. All right, well, but, you know, but part no, of I'll take a look. I'll take All a look right. right now. Some of our, our our other conditions have asked that the that the area be cleaned, specific areas be cleaned up. So that would be one of. The, am I correct, Graham, in saying that 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 we have asked the that the commission has, has placed that condition? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's not unusual that that it no. be a condition for the for this for this right. side. I'm talking about ongoing maintenance. I wasn't talking about you know. Yes, right. when you approve something, you can require somebody to paint this or fix that or whatever, but mm. that was the ongoing stuff. Okay, so um, uh, Mr. Hyman, we still have, uh, we have these conditions and then uh, whether or not the sign should be aluminum or PVC. Are we going back, are we going to vote on that? Yeah, somebody has to, somebody has to raise a, a motion. Yeah, we need a motion. Okay, Jason, can you? All right, raise the motion? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the application with the following conditions. And, and Graham, uh, jump in if I forget one: uh, that the material be aluminum, that the signage be 
maintain in the same location as the prior sign, utilizing the same mount uh, holes mm -hmm. for mounting. Um, that there, uh, that a black border or frame uh, raised be included. Um, that the building facade in the area of the sign be um, clean and any cracks repaired. Um, installation. Is there one more? The only uh, other one that I had was that the, the sign has to be stood off the building uh, for a little and, bit. Yeah. Uh, and that the uh, sign be slightly raised from the building. Graham, I have an objection to the current motion. Wait, can we, can we, is that appropriate at this moment? Um, so it is, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So essentially, essentially, there's a motion on the floor, and another commission member is going to second that motion, and then we're going to call the roll, and the commission will vote and render a final approval yeah. of this application. If you um, do not I feel that the situation, it's clarity. The oh, okay. The current signage, because of the recommendations from the board, adjusting the size of the sign and allowing the screen in the background to be exposed, will no longer meet the previous sign uh, requirements. So just, I need clarity on that motion because if I'm going to follow the previous signage, then I can't allow any stone to show. And what the board recommended was stone to show and little black dress so, did not have Yeah, any. no, so just to clarify, uh, Mr. White, the, yeah. that is not part of the proposed conditions, that gap along the bottom, uh, the proposed location is to match the same. That was the second condition that Mr. Hyman read. So, so just clarity, thank you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, just okay. to be clear, I'm not talking about um, raising it vertically from the transom. It's talking about being raised off the building facade. Off the building facade to allow for water. From the back. Thank you. Okay, yeah, so you we have a motion on the floor for Mr. Hyman. We need a second for that motion. Wait, wait, can I just say something? The aluminum should be a matte color. It could be the white, but it should be matte. That's in our, our uh, ordinance. It said aluminum. Can you read the language again, Tom? About the aluminum? It's in the design guidelines. Design guidelines? It said. Yeah, hold on just one sec. Um, I want to make sure that we're specific. I have to find it again. I think it basically said Matt or. It doesn't matter to me whether. So, uh, under number eight, materials for the guidelines for signs, um, it's a material for new signs. New signs out of materials such as wood and glass, and metals such as copper, bronze, or aluminum. Ensure metal signs have a matte or subdued finishes. Sand blasted wood signs are appropriate. The use of neon may be appropriate for mid 20th century storefront. So all I'm suggesting is that when we say aluminum, it should be a matte or sub, you know subdued. Well, subdued matte. just means not high gloss. So I think whatever the finish is would be acceptable. Well, no, I think it's important that you use the very language in our in our document. Otherwise, you know, what's the point of having it documented? <laughs> all right, no. so I'm going to amend my motion. <laughs> Uh, oh, sorry, Kathleen, we're getting some feedback from you. Sorry. Go ahead, Jake. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, same motion, just adding subdued in terms of the finish of the aluminum. Okay. So Not you, high finish. Subdued finish. Okay. Um, so that's the motion. Do we have a second? I second. Second by Mr. Reimnitz. Okay, and we'll call the roll. Uh, Ms. Kane Levy. Reimnitz. Aye. Mr. Greenbaum. Aye. Mr. Rooney. Um, I accept that I would accept plastic, the uh, PVC. Okay. Mr. Hyman. Aye. Ms. Bennett. Yes. Okay. The application is approved. Graham, I have a quick question. Does it say in those guidelines read by the gentleman in the blazer that you can't use PVC as your signage? 
It doesn't say that they cannot be used. It just says that it, those are the recommended materials. So the, just for clarification, in the section above, uh, Mr. Uh, Connolly read from section eight on page 122 of the guidelines. The paragraph above that on the material generally it says, for mid 20th century buildings that do not retain their original signs, new signs may be constructed of traditional uh, materials traditional to their periods, uh, such as backlit fluorescent or neon signs or glass or plastic metal letters or, oh, actually, I'm sorry, the paragraph above that, uh, it says, finished wood signs are appropriate, plastic substrate or unfinished wood signs are not recommended. So that's that's where we would leave. Again, it's not, it's not um, prohibited, but it's not recommended. And we voted, we voted, um, it sounds to me like we voted with the yeah, We just voted, we're done, aren't we? Let's move on. So it's aluminum. Yeah. Okay. It's been approved with those conditions. I'm, I'm sorry, can you review the conditions? I'm quite confused to what the conditions are. I understand aluminum, but I've been told it needs to be higher up in order to show those stones. Yes. Been... So, Mr. Mr. Whiteout, I'm going to type up the proposed certificate of approval, and I'll be sharing a draft of that with you. Um, and then the commission will approve that certificate at their meeting on June 18th. Okay, and if I object the current signage for what it's going to be made from? So you can appeal this decision to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, and the Zoning Board of Adjustment has final decision to uh, reverse uh, or affirm the decision made by the Commission this evening. Okay, thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to apologize. I need to bow out now. So um, I think you have a quorum. You don't need me for the next vote. Yes, we, uh, yeah, and just to um, clarify for everybody, the next application is just a referral from the planning board. So it's um, just recommendations over to the planning board. And we do have a forum. So that's okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll hey, see thank you. Bye. Bye, thank you, Carolyn. Bye. 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 I'm just going to step out. Well, we have everybody here. Grandma, I guess Caroline's left. I just want to uh, inform everybody of the next meeting date, which I believe is the 18th. Yes, Thursday, June 18th. Okay, but I think she's gone. Okay, um, so our next um, our next application. Can I ask a question in the meantime? Yes, mm -hmm. For instance, we just approved this sign with these conditions, but we don't really know what the it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. and we don't really know in detail what this sign is going to look like. Does this get reviewed again? Does someone look at it? You look uh, at it. So get... the the store owner will have to file for a construction permit, and we'll review the construction permit against the the conditions listed in the certificate for conformance. Okay. 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 Moving on to the next um, item, which is planning. This is a referral from the planning board, application twenty six seventy two. Khalid Ahmad Al Bayati at 224 Lorraine Avenue. This is site plan approval for parking area improvements, a freestanding sign, fencing, and trash enclo enclosures. We're reviewing it because this uh, building stands in the Upper Montclair Historic District. Um, as every people know, it was a um, it's a uh, a wood building that currently has a business on the ground floor. Um, a retail business, and um, originally it was a residence that was moved in from Valley Road. It's the only building that still stands within that historic district that um, speaks to the uh, uh, time before it turned into a commercial district. As I said, it was a residential uh, building. So um, who do we have from the applicant, um, Amit? Yes. Can you can you state your name and your relationship to the yes my name is Tan, yes my name is Tan Ahmed Al Bayati I'm the owner of two two four Lauren Avenue okay and, uh, and then we also have the architect John Guadagnoli there he is hi okay. hi and you're the architect of the of the That's proposed correct. project I, I prepared the drawings yes and I okay. So thank you. So Mr. Krasik, can would you um, swear these right. two gentlemen in, please? Would you gentlemen raise your right hands, please? You solemnly swear the 
testimony you're going to get, swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to give this commission, truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. I do. Thank you very much. Could you state your names again and uh, just state your names so we know who the oath My name is Talib Hamid Al Bayati. Thank you, Mr. Al Bayati. I'm John Guadagnoli, uh, project architect. John, thank you. And uh, go ahead. Okay, so Graham has put the plan up on the screen. Um, I know there's some things that we have to look at the uh, fencing, the trash enclosure, um, the proposed uh, sidewalk that will go down the west. So, why don't we have uh, uh, building? Mr. Guardian, if you want to review and kind of give an overview. Right. Okay. Uh, and the can, sign. And just let me know how you'd like me to control the drawing and I can move around for the for the commission. Okay, I'll just I'll just direct everybody verbally, but if, if we sure. need to circle something, I'll let you know. I can zoom in. Uh, uh, in the center, of course, uh, upper center is a photograph of the building as it uh, stands. Um, uh, before we do anything, the uh, applicant wishes to make some uh, uh, cosmetic repairs. There's some uh, degradation of the soffits, uh, some of the fascias. So he's going to just repair and replace with same like material, uh, uh, you know, so uh, th that's just wanted to get that out of the way. There'll be some general upgrades, but uh, uh, no change in materials or, uh, you know, his historic uh, uh, signals. Uh, then the, um, okay, I guess we'll start with defensing. I think that's probably the first best. The upper right corner is the site plan, and there are two types of fence. The first one is along the west side of the property. And it is a demising fence between the two, between the neighbor and, and uh, Mr. Albayati's property. Uh, it's put there because the neighbor's driveway is there and they're perpetually driving over his property and sometimes even blocking his own driveway. So he needs to put a fence up. The fence is four foot, six inches tall. It's made of vinyl. It'll be in a light gray color. And a detail of that fence is at the bottom center of the drawing. It is misnamed wood fence detail one. It should be vinyl fence detail one. My apologies. Vinyl fence? Yeah. Yep. Between the two properties. Uh, it, it, it runs uh, from about the, even with the front porch of the, of the building, all the way back uh, to, uh, it separates the two properties. Um, uh, the, the, the parking lot that you see on Mr. Albayati's property has been reconfigured to organize the parking uh, into uh, six different parking places. You can see them uh, illustrated in the site plan on the upper right. Um, one of the recommendations by uh, Mr. Connolly uh, is that a, um, a, a bumper, a, cur a, curb, a, a wheel stop be placed spot number five, which we have no problem with. We'll, we'll, we'll provide that. Um, we also turned this property into a one-way drive-through property, which was the recommendation, uh, and we followed it. Basically, you uh, come in from Lorraine and go through the property, and you exit uh, out the, um, it's like an access drive to the parking lot behind uh, on the east side of the property. Uh, now, the uh, I mentioned the fencing. The other fence is a uh, shadow box fence, which uh, is... Uh, you can see it in the on the site plan where it's located uh, by parking oh, spot. Oh. Sorry, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at them. I'm yeah. Uh, the shadow box fence is just a small segment that essentially privatizes spot number five where the cars park. Um, and uh, the, that's it for the fencing. Uh, the trash enclosure is at the uh, uh, south side of the rear rear of the property and it's uh, enclosed and it, and, it, and it has a cover as uh, as required and that detail is on the far left of my uh, drawing um, it shows a cross section through it as well as a, a plan of the uh, trash enclosure uh, on the upper left there is an elevational view of the trash enclosure as well as a side view so the trash enclosure is visible all around top and and, and cut through um, and then the other thing would be signs. Um, there is currently an existing address sign on the front lawn 
Uh, it just simply has the address that does not identify a business. Uh, we are proposing a second sign uh, on the, uh, the, is that the northeast uh, corner, which, and the sign is uh, detailed right in the center of my drawing. Uh, it's six feet tall and uh, the dimensions are four feet by three feet. It'll be aluminum painted. Um, and uh, we don't know what the tenants' names all are yet because uh, that is yet to be known, but uh, it'll have space for whatever tenants are in the building. I think, I think that's, that's, most, that's about it. Uh, oh, wait, I'm two, sorry. There is, there two is signs. Yeah, yeah, we're allowed because we have two primary structures on the property. They get one okay. sign per. Uh, I, I forgot to mention the air conditioning. Uh, the air conditioners are not on the ground. Uh, I, uh, Graham, did, does everybody have the latest drawings that show the air conditioning location? Yes, you do. Okay. The air conditioners will be uh, wall mounted facing the rear. You see them um, in the site plan. So they're, not, they're not visible anywhere, and they're much more efficient this way because the refrigerant can go right to the uh, air panel inside. And it does not take up space in the parking lot. That's it. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll start with questions from the commissioners then, Mr. Reimitz. Uh The light gray vinyl fence that separates the drive two driveways. Mm -hmm. Is that a solid fence? Am I reading that as a solid fence? Uh, yes. With joints, there's no. It's solid, basically. Right. It has the the you know it has vertical uh, striations, but it is solid. Yeah. Okay. What is the? I see the the sign the six foot tall sign. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it made out? Of? I understand the stone base and sure. Is there some sort of stone that you're tying into? No, not at all. Uh, the, the, I'm not, I'm not, I don't recall there being a stone elsewhere on the property. The foundation okay. of the building is brick. Is the, is the, uh, the, it has a brick base is what you're saying? The, yes, is, it does. Okay. Uh, and the, and the, what is the painted part of the sign made out of? Uh, it'll be a, a, an aluminum painted sign. You know, uh, it has legs that are aluminum, and everything about it's aluminum. Yes, <laughs> and the uh, it would be black on white, you know, black lettering on white background, with a border. As you can, you see in the picture, there's a border uh, on the sign. Got it. Um, uh, I don't have any other questions at the moment. Mr. Greenbaum, Mr. Rooney, I'm here. Oh, I can't. I can't see. Just, there you are. Okay. Right. So, um, did you consider using um, instead of a, a, a sign uh, with a base like this? Did you consider like a hanging blade mounted sign? From where? I'm sorry. I'm asking for the sign that you have on the where you presently are showing it with a stone base. Mm -hmm. Did you consider like a post with a blade mounted sign? You mean like a, a like a like a sign that's suspended and can like swings that kind of sign? Yes. Right. You know, I, yeah, I did, but um, because it might, if it was one tenant, yeah, sure. You know, it's 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 kind of a, a single sign, a single tenant. But with the possibility of three, uh, you know, or more, uh, then it would be, it was kind of like a big sign swinging in a wind. I just, I just, I just thought it, it was uh, such that a, a pole, um, a ground mounted one, uh, just, just seemed uh, more appropriate given, you know, that it isn't just one business. You know, if it was one business, fine. It would, you know, I, I guess it's sort of a, a thing I have in my head, but uh, no, the answer is uh, no, no. With with the, with the number of businesses anticipated, uh, I did you, not consider it. So. Yeah, um, you, we'll we'll talk about it in the comment section. But you can you can have 
you know, like mounts, um, you know, standardized mounts so that the signage can be changed um, regardless of whether it's a, I don't think the, the mounting of the base will have any effect on the uh, ability to have multiple tenants. Um, the material of the, 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 the fence, I, I'm not clear. The fence that you're talking about is a PVC, PVC fence? Yeah, like, right, in gray. Yeah, like gray. Yeah. And that goes from, I'm just trying to understand it in your drawing because I'm confused. Okay, where, uh, where, go is it going perpendicular to Lorraine? Yes. Yes, that's right. So it's, uh, it's along the property line of that's between correct. the driveway. Okay, and how, and the height of that is Four listed feet. here as what? Four feet, six inches. Four feet, six inches. And uh, did you consider any other materials besides PVC? Well, uh, yeah, uh, the reason we had chose the PVC is because there is like this, this car and truck traffic up and down that driveway. And we're just thinking the splashing and the, I, th I think a, like a wood fence would deteriorate. Um, and, and this was, this was the kind of the uh, default material. Um, you know, did, you consider, open, but... did you consider AZAC as a material, like a, a synthetic wood? No, I didn't. No, actually I didn't. Um, okay. How would that be better? Is it because you can paint it? Is that what you mean? Or because you can- But also it's, it's, uh, it, it's more reminiscent of a wood. It's a solid substrate, and it has a lot of the qualities that you're looking for. But it it it, it more closely approximates wood, you know, structural wood. Right. Um, um. And then Graham, let me understand. So because there's a secondary uh, tenant in the back, they're entitled to a second sign. Is that correct? That's what John said. But I want to make sure I understood that. Wait, your your mic your mic is off, Graham. Sorry, that's that's I haven't done a full zoning evaluation on that. Um, you know, I was focusing for this review for the purposes of the site plan approval. Um, and I believe that the ordinance does allow for two freestanding, one freestanding sign per principal building. Um, I have I haven't been able to confirm that just because my computer's being occupied to show these documents this evening. But um, that would be something that would be part of the discussion by the uh, planning board when they you know review this application. With respect to the signage, I did have one follow-up question with respect to the rabbit rabbit sign. Um, will that be eliminated and incorporated into the freestanding sign? Oh, um, I, I guess you'll have to ask ask the the, the client that uh, that question. I, I I was not uh, tasked with dealing with it. Uh, Mr. Albayati, what what do yeah. you say about that? Well, rabbit rabbit is an existing uh, sign, mm -hmm. and. Um, and we thought that since we have two buildings, we are entitled to two signs. And the second, uh, the one existing one, w which is only 224, uh, there is nothing on it. It's, uh, a stone with 224 on it, even not even the road name. So it's don't consider as a sign. We can remove it if we need to. Or we yeah. can ask rabbit, rabbit and rabbit to choose one of them. But we need a sign because in the back we have two floors. We have two businesses in the front. We have several, you know, um, suites. So the total, we have like six units in the two buildings. Um, and now we have four, the, the new sign is for four names and we have a rabbit rabbit. So um, whatever uh, the commission is really comfortable with, we are flexible. We just want their uh, blessing because um, I'm spending money to upgrade this, um, Building is neglected, and we have the birds nesting inside through the soffit. We have mm -hmm. squirrels, and really, I'm spending a lot of money just to improve it because it's a historical place. Yeah. So, sure. um, I'm, I'm flexible, as I said, and um, I'm, I'm ready to discuss any any uh, thing which we can agree upon on the commission or. Yes. Yeah. So, just to kind of expand upon some of the signage commentary, so. Um, and what an address number sign is permitted, and it doesn't count towards the wall, the business related signage. Um, so an address numbering sign is permitted separate from business signage. Um, yes. We're calling my ordinances off the cuff here. So, um, so that, yes. that so the, essentially the address number sign doesn't really count as one of the business signs. Um, yes. so, but the question becomes, you know, if Rabbit Rabbit has this existing sign mounted between the posts on the porch, 
um, that is their one sign. They only get one sign. You can't use a wall mounted yes. sign plus a freestanding no, sign. No, we're not, we're not going to put another sign for Rabbit Rabbit, but we have more than four businesses for the new sign, okay? Okay, that, yeah, that was just the clarification I wanted for the commission. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Sure. That. Do you have any other questions, David? Um, the uh, the fence that's on the um, going perpendicular to the rain that you were suggesting was going to be PVC um, is that uh, that's an open uh, uh, lattice type fence. I just asked, I asked no, the question. The four foot six fence that you were referring to that runs perpendicular to Lorraine Avenue. No, it's a, it's a uh, it's, it's a solid it, fence. It, it's a solid fence. It has no opening. I don't. It, what's it into? I'm confused. A solid fence to me is a wall. I mean, what, what do you mean? It has no opening. It's a fence without holes in it. It's essentially a privacy fence, so you yeah. can't be seen through. Right. Right. Isn't there a picture of it on the? It, yes. If you scroll to the left. The yeah, I'm looking at it. I can't, I, it's hard to just. It's hard to understand. So wait, which one is it? Is the wood center? It's labeled incorrectly as wood fence detail, but it's. It, this it's right here. It says semi-private vinyl fence. I'm showing it on the screen right here. So this, these are solid panels, vertical panels. Okay, so it's panel panel. joints. Got it. Got it. Okay, so it's 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 uh, it's uh, opaque, but it's paneled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, uh, there's a cross section right next to it on the right. There's a right here. cross mm -hmm. section. Where is it? Is just to the right of the elevational drawing. It says section one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Just okay. Right. All right, uh, I guess that answers my questions. And j wait, one other thing, the air conditioner you're referring to, is that a ductless mini split that you're changing it to? Yes, yeah. The ductless mini split. So that goes on the wall as opposed to what was previously yeah. on the ground. Yeah. Got it, okay. I'm done with the question. Okay, Mr. Rooney? Um, the design of the sign detail going out on the, on the street, <clears throat> Did you say that the existing foundation of the building is brick? Yes. Can we change the stone base to brick? Gladly, sure. And is there any place on the property where we have the four foot masonry cap? I'm thinking that it's more brick and wood. Can we do something that's... Uh, you mean replace the masonry cap with a wood cap? Or a brick, no, just a brick. Just like a soldier just, course or something like that? Right. Yeah, a soldier course. Yeah, or, or uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, a roll lock or something. Yeah, okay, yeah. Something like that. Right. To make it a brick pound. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Right. And uh, our recommendations from the planning board was the one to make it one way and kind of, I don't remember how many parking spaces you had, but this maximized whatever we could do. Yeah, um, this follows their recommendation. Just right, right. For clarity, that's the Development Review Committee recommendation. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Uh, I, oh, do you have another question, Steve? No, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> um, I have a question. Um, the is there a fence that will uh, be on the the uh, what would that be the east side of the building from Lorraine down to the park down to the secondary structure? Um, uh, no, there right there. Yeah. So that's no no fence. So the only fence that you're proposing is the one between the two buildings. The, between the two properties, yes. Between yes. the two properties. Right. Well, there's and this section the, of fence, and then this one section of fence right here, parking space number five. Oh yeah, the okay. privacy fence. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you don't see the and, car. Right. Then let me ask you about the trash enclosure. Um, okay. On you have it on the plan. I see that the doors um, you have as wooden doors. Could you go up a little bit, uh, Graham? Could you uh -huh. Put the keep going to the left. The, there is a detail of the trash enclosure. Oh, over here, yes. Center left. Yeah. Here. Um, where did I see that? I think there's a detail. Just below the circle thing. Below what Graham circled, right on. Yeah, the below that, can you go up a little bit more, Graham? Does that? Yes. What is that? What is what is the material of that? Asphalt roofing, and then is that um, trash enclosure section? Is that vinyl as well? 
No, no, I, I see what you're asking. No, you, the, uh, I was, we were told that we have to have a covering over the trash enclosure, okay? And the trash enclosure has its own plastic lid. So in order to be able to lift that lid and throw trash in, we have to essentially build four posts on each corner of the trash enclosure and, and construct a, an actual roof, which a shingled roof over it. So that's, you can see it's eight feet tall so that we can lift the cover of the trash bin uh, uh, and still be covered. And this is wood fencing, six foot wood fencing surrounding correct. it, correct? Shadow box wood, wood fencing, yes. Yep. So may I ask why you didn't consider um, keeping everything wood on the prop or ASAC as somebody suggested? To make the materials all consistent that you're oh, using oh. as fencing or or uh, yeah I, I, I don't know I, I don't know how to answer that I, you know um yeah, I, uh -huh. so you know the the AZAC is like horrifically expensive you you know that right I mean it's really really expensive I mean each each plank of course I you know it's it, it's 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 out of this world um uh, now uh, as far as the the and uh, the AZAC it's visible from the uh, uh, street, the, the, the four foot six sign, that's one thing. But the trash enclosure, the AZAC, first of all, is very heavy. Uh, and I'm not sure it's structural. In other words, we have hinges holding the door uh, to this trash enclosure. And, and uh, you know, I don't know that we could drill into AZAC and, ha and have it hold the way wood does. AZAC it is does. More siding. It's more I believe it. I believe it's, it's uh, structural. You <laughs> It's, it's a garbage enclosure, we, you know, so we, we, we match the, 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 the privacy fence, uh, you know, that we that we are proposing at the end of the uh, spot number five. So we just matched it. Um, uh, you want to, an, an, a, an AZEC enclosure, because AZEC okay. is a trim material. I mean, it's not, it's, no, you, know, you don't it's use No, I just, I just priced an AZEC fence for my, from, for our house as well. And uh, we ended up going with wood, but um, I think the look is 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 especially in the historic district much better than vinyl. What do we have in our design guidelines for vinyl yeah, fencing? I have it right here, so can I read from it? Yes, yeah. please. All right. So under six point one three guidelines for site features, fences and walls, item number seven, the installation of vinyl fencing is discouraged. Vinyl is yeah. not a suitable material and does not convey the same appearance as historic fencing materials such as wood or brick. Okay, well, that's that says a lot. <laughs> um, so let's do an AZEC fence along the property line. Okay, um, and that, you know, I think that's okay. Uh, we we've removed the sin essentially. Okay. I um, have a question. Do we have, if we have to do it to wood, do we have to have Isaac wood or we can select another kind of wood? Because I'm thinking of the expenses, really. This is a long wall and uh, it will be expensive. This time, you know, just with do, this a, do, a pa do a painted cedar fence along them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, I have a question for you. Is what is this? this what is on the is that the entrance to the parking lot on the other side of the fence well the, the, the neighbors the neighbors on the main valley road they, they have tandem parking there and they've been using my driveway for delivery even their clients they park in my driveway and they walk to the back of the store especially the hardware store and they pick and load and unload while they are parking. I called the police several times. We have big problem. Well, I wait. even kick them. Uh, so the so, fence will stop, stop neighbors from using my driveway. Because wait, they, I, I, I just want to understand. So the, yeah. the, the other side of the fence is the public driveway into the no, public. No, Dave, Dave you, have the, you have the property flipped. Okay, so is it, is it the dentist's office? No, no, that's, no, 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 it's, that's, it's on the other side, on the other side. So what's the other tenant? What's on the other side where the fence, on the, the other, other side? side the there are stores on Valley Road, the stores on Valley Road, all the stores on Valley Road. Yeah, there's a driveway, there's a, 
a, a portion of the lot, it's an L-shaped lot that wraps from Valley Road around to Lorraine Avenue. So that it's the rear of a, a lot that fronts on Valley Road. There's an access driveway for that property, an access area for that property. Like, that's where the gap is. Right. Murph's, right? Murph's was right there. Right, right, right. Okay. 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 So, so um, okay. point of clarification, um, the, the two properties share a curb cut. If you look at the top of my plan, there's a curb cut that both properties use. Is you know what we're doing is that though we're segmenting one property from the other, so the, the entrances remain, but you know one side is Mr. Albayati's, the other one is uh, is the neighbor, right? I, I, the, is, I think is that what you were asking about? Is that what? Well, what the only asking? question is if you're concerned about people parking there, can't you just put like a low, like a divider in the road without a fence? Couldn't you just have like a low so no car could cross over it? Like a small, low kind of a. If, if it's if if it's low, then they will park in my driveway and they will pick whatever they like to pick from the stores. Because I've seen them, they block me. <laughs> I come to park and they block me, waiting for delivery from these stores. Okay, they will hand things over the low, uh, whatever low things you suggest I am putting. Hmm. I have a real problem. I went to court. To stop them from, you know, trespassing and from, uh, you know, parking. I called the police several times. It's a bigger problem. Two of yes. my neighbors, I took them to court, you know, because of that. Okay. That yeah, you're requesting a fence. Yes, we understand that. But I didn't, um, Mr. Greenbaum. Any other questions, or is that it for the questions? Well, I'm ready for comments whenever you're ready. Okay, but I didn't ask Mr. Hyman. Are you? Do you have any questions, Mr. Hyman? No question. Okay. So um, why don't we go back now to comments, uh, Mr. Reimnitz? To... Okay. Uh, um, first of all, I'd like to say that the sidewalk along the uh, access way to the parking in the back is a big improvement, mm. uh, uh, as well as that little green strip between the sidewalk and the granite curve. I think that's a big improvement on the site. Um, I would say that this big sign, this big six foot, this is a big sign. This is six feet tall by three foot. That's tall as I am. Big sign that you're putting there. Um, and it's not, as I look at it, I go, okay, what's the historical value of this sign? There's nothing, in my opinion. 7-Eleven. Uh, what? 7-Eleven, son. Yeah, I mean, it's, so, what I would suggest is, is, is that it's a sign not unlike, in terms of construction, the address sign. Two posts with some sort of wood panel in between, you know? You can do something that relates to the existing architecture of the house. If you need to give it some sort of base, give it a little brick base so it relates to the house. But uh, it's, it's uh, I, I don't think it has anything to do with anything. So I, I don't find any redeeming value in what it looks like. I understand the need for it, but I think it, it's, it doesn't fit uh, what's there. In terms of vinyl, uh, I would say everything should be wood, painted wood. I think the asphalt shingles on the uh, 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 garbage sheds should match the shingles on the roof of the house. Uh, I think, you know, I, I hear you having problems with your neighbor. I suspect you're going to be rebuilding this fence one way or the other between the two driveways. I think trucks and car, everything is very tight there. Uh, I, I just see that as, that's, I guess that's your issue. It's going to be an ongoing maintenance issue, I think, that, that fence. And I guess the question would be, why can't you just install ballers or something? You know, if, you, know, if you can... Uh, do the same thing, which is just obstruct cars or trucks from going from one side to the other. Um, those 
Those are my comments. Thank you. Mr. Greenbaum, you called Ms. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Okay, Mr. Greenbaum. Okay, um, Graham, I'm gonna ask you a favor. Can I, you pass the screen to me? I wanna show something on screen. I cannot. Really? We have that disabled, that feature has been disabled because there's concerns about members of the public coming in and trying to share things, so. That's strange. How can I show you something? Describe it. You're not supposed to be designing anyway. You're supposed to be. Oh, John. Here, I just sent a link for people to click on, and I'm going to send a screenshot. Can I can I send a screenshot over to you? I guess what well, what are we? What is this item that we're sharing? Because they're introducing something new that we haven't. I'm, I'm, no. Well, this is because it starts to get a little complicated because we have members of the public. Just describe it. Either. Yes, David. Just sure. describe what it is that you're. Okay. Well, first of all. Um, there's a, a wall pole, uh, as an example, a wall pole AZAC fence. They also do it in cedar, but that would be very appropriate. Remember, it's a residential type building. It reads as a residential building, and that's part of the charm and truly the value of the building, uh, aesthetically, as a commercial building, um, that it has a residential quality to it. And so I think that the fence, while I understand the need, uh, I think it's important to be sensitive to the fact that it should be because you're really on the threshold of a residential neighborhood. So I, I, I sent a link to a wall pole uh, open a fence that has openings, you know, that's very nice, like a nice trellis fence. And uh, you can do it. You don't have to use wall pole, but I'm just suggesting that as a visual. Excuse me, David. We're not supposed to be designing this project. They've requested a, a fence, so um, okay. Let's well, no. Move we forward. Wanted, we're, we're discussing. We're discussing concepts. In fact, John just suggested a type of sign, and hey, this is a different in. thing. We're putting. No, it's not. We're putting in a fence. Okay. So you so, do, what we're saying so is the material. It should be residential in quality, would be my statement. In, well, there's in, a lot of residential that's and old fences. Well, I'm just, you know, something ah. everybody can design when they want to design, but now when someone else suggests, I would like them to look at a sign on 47 Park Street, which is a professional building, again, residential in, in its neighborhood, residential in its character, but it's a commercial building. 47 Park Street is a very appropriate sign and it has multiple hanging sections. I'd, I have a picture of it that I can share. Uh, but we're not but, able to do that, David. Um, can you, is it a wooden sign? Can you describe that? A wooden sign? It's 47 Park Street and I'm gonna, I, I can show it very quickly right here. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't allow me. No. As I explained, no. the feature has not been enabled. Right. Well, I, I sent it as a, there's no way to send a file to, how about if I email it to Graham and you put it on your site? Okay, that's what I'll do. So Graham, okay. look for an email for me right now. In the meanwhile, you can go on to the next person and then I'll come back. Uh, David, we, we cannot do that tonight. So you, do you understand? We just spent in an hour talking about a sign, whether it should have a molding, or we talked about colors, and you're telling me that we can't talk about the type of characteristics of a sign? We are talking okay. about those, David. Okay, but we so cannot, I'm giving a you can't reference. show. Okay. Why don't we I'm move on to, to so publicly? Okay. Mr. Um, who, Mr. Hyman, do you have a... Uh, I don't know a remark I, i'm sorry i can't hear you he said he didn't have any comments on this but just to touch on david's point i mean you can't you can't introduce your own evidence into the uh the proceeding it's one thing to talk about things that you have no reference to but you know in terms of displaying product from from uh websites or different vendors i mean that's that's going beyond Okay. 
Okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Con I, I neglected to ask That's Mr. Okay. Conley for the rest of his comments. That's okay. Um, just two things. Um, Graham, I think we have a conflict in, in our de design guidelines and regarding freestanding and monument signs. Mm. Um, because under the sign section of the guidelines, under freestanding and monument signs, it, it clearly states only one freestanding sign is permitted per principal building. So yeah, so the guidelines are not consistent with the ordinances. Is the issue there, it seems. So, so that, do we have a photograph of that um, address sign that's on the property because it is fairly large? Um, it's not, you know, a small, small sign. Yeah. So, and this this gets to a conflict in the ordinance. There is actually no size limitation on address signs. So signs that just display an address number. Okay, but it is <laughs> you would categorize it as a freestanding sign then, yes? This is where I need to look. There's there's a whole separate code on building numbering signs. So they're outside of signs. So it's almost like they're not even related elements. So it gets a little bit confusing. I think that what's best for us here is to um, incorporate your comments to, over to the planning board and give the planning board jurisdiction to figure out how to deal with multiple freestanding signs. So. And whether they are both freestanding signs or one is an address sign and one is a freestanding. What I proposed, and Graham, what I sent you as the email, if you'd share that, you would see a combination of a sign and an uh, uh, address sign with, in conjunction with a tenant sign. Okay. Uh, Mr. Conley, any uh, going down your list then? Yeah, just under item number three, then, um, I believe, again, under the guidelines, we require uh, this to be screened. Yes. As the applicant, have you, have you, um, are you going to do any landscaping, propose any landscaping around the, um, the new condensers at the back of the, right. Uh, where the stairs are. Those, the those condensers are mounted to the wall. Yeah. They're like seven feet. And they're high. high. Yeah. And so just to just to clarify this point, so the applicant provided uh, revised plans, which unfortunately were delivered after we sent out your packet. So okay. the plan set that everybody has um, shows two condensing units in this location right here. And those have been eliminated, correct? Mr. Guardioli, oh, okay. so those are no longer there and now they've been moved over here. So they're actually not even visible to the public at this point. Right, they're in the right. corner, that's right. Yes. Okay, okay, so we we can uh, eliminate that. Yeah, so comment that. number um, three. Uh, three, yeah, is, is no longer relevant at this time. Okay, and then we've already discussed the uh, materials and actually uh, for the sign and the, and the um, uh, the only other thing is the lighting, the lighting for the monument sign. Uh, lighting is proposed, so I was requesting cut sheets for the new sign or the new lighted lights. <laughs> They're ground mounted lights for the monument sign. Yeah, and so that can be something that's um, a part of a, our standard, uh, you know, condition that we apply that we, you know, request of the planning board here that the applicant return for final review of finishes of materials that can include the lighting. Okay. Uh, and cut sheets of those. So. Yeah, that's a good idea. Help get returns. Um, okay, so Tom, then I think you're you're um, finished with all of your comments on this project. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, so then, Graham, if we go back and look at the uh, recommendations, then uh, mm -hmm. are we ready to do that? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think the first one, it sounds like we had a lot of commentary about the, the sign. Um, you know, I think Mr. Reimnitz had the most um, kind of coherent take on that, that the sign should be, and that, you know, we've heard a lot of different, you know, takes on the sign. So I wanted to, you know, just reiterate Mr. Reimnitz, uh, you know, he suggested that it be two wooden posts with a wood panel sign. Okay. Um, and then I think um, building on that, that um, the commission should request that the planning board uh, have the applicant evaluate incorporating the address number into that sign to eliminate two signs on the property. Can you show that? Can you show that image on the screen, please, Graham? Uh, I don't think we're going to be introducing any new items. I, 
Well, just as a visual reference so that they exactly what you just described, you can show an example of it so that everyone can understand. They can come back with a design. All right, well, that's fun. They have to come back then. Well, the, uh, oh, actually, we're making recommendations. Yeah, yeah we're this making is a recommendation to the planning this. board. So, right. So, so two to wouldn't. Please continue, Graham. I'm sorry. Yeah, so the proposed are you, sign. Are you looking at something like this? Is that what yes, I think that's what we're looking at, Mr. Mr. Guadagnoli. Except with openings, except the difference to what, what I had sent is. I can't see anything. Is that there's exactly. hooks. Yeah, it's because, John, you need to say something so your screen pops up as you're showing it. Hey. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so if you talk while you're showing it, then it moves you, your image to the front. So hold it up again and just say, this is my sign. This is my sign. We still can't yeah. see it. Yeah, it's too small. So I think, so to help this move along, so essentially yes. two wooden posts with a wooden panel between right. um, and that the applicant should work to incorporate the address number into the sign as well. Um, and that the applicant will present a final version of the sign as approved by the planning board to the commission. Okay, can you, what sign can you, you post? Hey, yeah. Can you please make reference in the recommendation that it, it was suggested that whatever address I gave you, 47 Park Street, as an exam, visual example to show the planning board? I will take a look at that, I will. It, it's it's beneficial for your tenant for your your owner because if a tenant changes you just change one of the panels it also lightens it it right. also makes it much lighter okay. and pretty and more attractive and it's it very by chains panel. right they right there's there's slats with chains that's like right. yes I, i've seen them okay yeah. okay. okay all right so, okay, so we the have... second one is that the applicant is to eliminate the the proposed vinyl fence and replace it with a yes cedar painted a painted cedar fence i believe is what mr um, right Ryan yes says. Okay. but i i would like to and propose then the four, third one um hold on, was... hold on, Graham. on the fence i'd like to say i would like to suggest that it has it's an open fence meaning that light can pass through that it's translucent as opposed to a solid fence it'll accomplish the exact same thing of impeding people from trans, you know crossing over and trespassing but it's still an it's an historic it's a home building and it should be of a residential quality not a opaque fence that's my suggestion yeah, i agree with that okay well uh, it's two of five so i need to you know we need some kind of consensus here um i think that uh as long as it's a cedar fence um the uh, uh you know and not vinyl um, you do have the section in the back that's screening the parking lot as well, correct? Yes. The correct. parking space, which um, I'll match them. Yeah. It should be ma matched. Whatever, yeah. whatever you do, they should be matched. Okay. Well, they could be coordinated. It doesn't have to be exactly matched. I mean, it, one could one could have have. Uh, open trellis and one could have a panel but could have the same posts and just in furtherance to the comment about the screening of the parking area the or the site plan ordinance does require that parking areas be screened with you know either landscaping or fencing so a solid fence in this in this case is more consistent with the site plan requirements can i make, okay. a, suggestion? Can I make a suggestion this, this, yes the, yes the shadow box fence uh, why is not the four foot six fence made the same way as a shadow box fence so all the fence fences match up so we don't have this and that and the other thing uh the shadow box doesn't allow you to see through it offsets boards on either side uh, that's a suggestion okay mm -hmm. I, I i still think um uh, you know it should be of a residential quality with with posts and and, and it should be open Ideally, with plantings along the base of it, if possible, I think it, I know that location very well, and uh, it's really the it's really the, the transition from a commercial district to a residential district. And while the building itself is zoned commercial, it has a residential character to it. And I okay, think I, point well, well taken, David. That's very good point. You've made it about three times, so I think it's up to the architect now and the uh, to. Uh, decide what they're going to present so uh to the planning board 
I so we put that condition. I get it. It could be recommended as a condition that it should be of residential character as part of a condition if we agree, because it is a residential style building. So this is just just to further clarify, this a is a recommendation building. to the planning board. Right. So, so, so and this, it's a, we, yeah. The, the commission it's here is not imposing the house. Okay. Mr. Petto, can you continue, please? Yes, I can. Um, the next uh, recommended condition is that the proposed um, asphalt shingles atop the garbage, the trash enclosure are to match the shingles atop the uh, principal building on the structure. Very good. Um, and then the fifth one, the last condition is, there's four conditions. The fourth condition is that the applicant is to return um, to present uh, the final sign plan um, and also for a review of all lighting materials and finishes uh, by the commission. Uh, finishes for the sign. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and the fence. And the lighting. Yeah, the lighting. And the yes, fence. lighting. Right, right. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Okay. So this is so, just a recommendation, so there's no vote or anything on this. So. Right, there's no vote on it. Okay. Can you read back the recommendations, please? Hmm. Um, so the sign is to be of two wood posts with a wood panel. Um, between the two posts, at, at, and the sign is to be presented uh, to the commission. Um, the applicant is to use a painted cedar shadow box wooden fence in place of the proposed vinyl fence. Uh, the applicant is to match the proposed asphalt shingles to the uh, shingles atop the existing principal structure. Um, and the applicant is to return to the commission for a final review of the lighting, materials, and finishes at the site. And the commission is our commission, yes? <laughs> Return to yes. our commission. Okay. Yeah. Typically, yes. how we handle that is um, we first the applicant will return to the revisions committee, and then if there is not consensus at the revisions committee, then it'll return to the full commission. Okay. Would you mind? I, can I ask a question? Can I just jump in, David? Okay. On, on this latest plan, I'm sorry. Since we didn't see this before, and now I'm just looking at it, I don't see the sidewalk in this plan anymore. Oh, that's oh, a good uh, point. Uh, Mr. Abayadi, you want to uh, uh, talk to them about that? Or... Okay. Um, now, the point is we have this um, narrow street, which is two-way system for the cars. And the we have a green, uh, I mean, in the front part, we have part of it's a green, part of it's a sidewalk. If we eliminate the sidewalk, we are pushing people to walk in the street. And there are cars going into two directions which means people will walk all the way from Lorraine until they reach the back of the second building without a sidewalk. Um, it's really dangerous because I- okay. uh, the, I, I understand that. I understand that. So you, you're gonna make that all a planting bed. You're gonna rip out the macadam that's there. But how we can walk if we have planting, like you have, you know, how- well, we I thought you said you didn't want people to walk. No, no, I want no. I have a sidewalk which enable people to walk off the street rather than on the street. Right. Where's the? I mean, it's all along. Now we have this part in the front with the green part of it, the green, but the 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 building, the the front building will narrow, and then we have very limited space for the sidewalk. Even in the back building, it's only twenty six inch sidewalk we have. That one here is 26 wow. inches. I see three foot. I want to know what happened to the sidewalk. Is the sidewalk being replaced by a garden bed or is it just asphalt there? there? There is, this is the garden bed and this is the asphalt. So there is, this is garden bed and this is asphalt. Yeah. Very narrow, narrow. We have narrow sidewalk as an asphalt, but we have all this green where so, the trees are. On the previous plan, I guess the question is, there was a previous plan that the commission was shown. Uh, let me mm -hmm. just pull it up for a second. And it was clear on the previous plan that there was to be a sidewalk installed. Um, here's the previous plan here. So I, I, the, what the commission is asking is, has this proposed sidewalk been eliminated? This, this element here. No, the sidewalk is still there, still there. I, okay, because it's... Said, if on we the, don't have the, on the latest, right on the latest version of the plan, that sidewalk is not shown. See the change in the coloring here. This is okay. the current plan. The prior okay. plan is this just a drafting? So we, 
Okay. No, John, no. John, can we show it for, for the revision when we do the revision? Can we show the sidewalk? Yes. Please? You yeah. want, Mr. Obayani, you want the concrete sidewalk? You're going to install a because brand new I, I, as I said, if we eliminate the sidewalk and there's no sidewalk on the other side, this is two ways car and there's a public car park in the back, a lot of cars park in the back and they are coming in and out. If we eliminate the sidewalk, we are pushing everybody to walk in the street. This is very dangerous. Even so, me, when, I, when I go from my building to the back building, I need that sidewalk. Otherwise, I will walk in the great, street. Great. So the sidewalk is there. It's just not on the yes. plan. Yes, it's not shown yeah. on this plan. That's right. all I want to clarify. Okay, yeah, good. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I was, I was, uh, that was my first comment. I thought that was a great improvement, the mm -hmm. sidewalk. Great. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Thank you. So, All Graham, right. Graham, do we need to put that in, into uh, our recommendations that the sidewalk, even though it's not shown on this second rendition, is to it will remain? So we, uh, you know, we do kind of our the preceding commentary where we talk about some of the justifications for the application. We can include that as well. So I'll include that. In yeah, the I think that should. I think that's important that the sidewalk remain. Okay, will do. Okay. Okay. Great. So I think we're. Um, we're finished with this application then. Mm -hmm. And when will this be uh, go to the uh, planning board? Do you have a date? Are you guys, you guys are think at the second meeting in June? John and Oh, Mr. sorry, are you, asking, are you asking me? Yeah, you guys are at the second meeting in June at the planning board? When is going to be in June? Uh, I need to confirm that date. It's not okay. June 8th. I think it's, uh, I think it's the second meeting in June. We cannot do it for the 16th of June because you have a meeting on the 16th. No, the next. No, that that's a zoning board meeting. That's not this. I okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, uh, sorry. I think yeah. I think June 22nd, but I'm not 100 percent sure. The applicant will be doing okay. public notice as required by law. Okay. Okay, then Graham, could you let us know when that date will be, to, so that somebody from our commission could be at that meeting? Yes, and Mr. Rooney will be there as well. I will be there. Oh, great. Okay. Is okay, that a wonderful? Like a planning board meeting for us i believe uh so there was notification i, I got to post notification and everything yeah there is going to be a notice requirement yes mm -hmm. okay uh 10 days before okay I got it. yeah okay, okay we can make that yeah okay so then graham will be in touch with you yeah and yeah. janice will confirm that date with you mr guardian <laughs> okay. okay okay thank you well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good thank night. You. Good Have night. Good Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Um, okay, the next thing on our Hello. agenda is the certificate uh, of appropriateness for the 467-467 no, uh, Bloomfield Avenue. It is uh, certificate number 2020-10. Um, Jason, would you like to handle this now for, um, go over, has everyone had a chance to read it? Yes. Okay. Do we, um, are there any revisions to this? No? No. 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 Okay. Move to approve. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Graham, so we can move this up along. Okay. Um, and um, just to, for everyone's uh, benefit, we are going to change our meeting date next month, June to the 18th, correct, Graham? What, yes, that's what correct. Date? We've already published notice for that. It's Thursday, June 18th. It's just one week prior to the meeting as scheduled. Okay, that baby that's great. Be on time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Graham, could you just before we adjourn, could you just give us an update for the grant that we've received where we are at that for the state section? Uh, the Please. contract is, uh, I think, awaiting final signature from the township manager um, and upon a final execution, uh, I'll be reaching out to schedule the initial kickoff meeting and get the, the work kicked off. So. When will that initial meeting be? Have you been in touch with uh, the state? to? figure out when that will be the uh, meeting. 
I have I'm just heard. thinking time wise. So please been sir. slow to hear back from the state, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I'm hoping to hear back from them. I don't know if the state needs to fully be there at the first kickoff meeting, but we can do some initial coordination with the con with the consultant to get started. So. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. Thank you. Um, and just the uh, education and outreach, uh, Steve and I have been working on a project, um, hopefully, that will be in coordination with this grant, which will be a virtual walking tour of the estate section, um, with highlighting many of the buildings that will be the, in the, um, the grant proposal. And then there was another idea that uh, came forward about creating a Facebook page for the HPC. And Graham um, is in contact with um, the, the uh, communications director, correct? And there's some restrictions on on uh, what we can and can't do and what can and cannot be posted. But it was my idea that it would be more of an informational page as opposed to um, having people go into the, the township website, which is a little bit off-putting and sometimes people don't find it easy uh, to uh, navigate. So uh, we'll have more information about that at, at our next meeting, I hope. And I did just building on that, I, mean, I just wanted to mention that um, we have set up a short um, URL, a short web address for the HPC. So it's just montclairnjusa.org slash HPC. If you go to that, uh, type that in, it'll take you right to our agenda page. So we've made it easier for folks to get there. Could you repeat, repeat that again? Sure, just montclairnjusa.org slash HPC. Okay, great. Okay, so I think on that note, when we have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Go ahead. <laughs> Did you okay. want to say something, Ira? No. <laughs> no, I was saying good I was saying good night. Oh, okay. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you.